live, I think. Indeed. So welcome, uh, everybody. I assume it's live now. I, I guess I can't be sure until I look, but uh, yep, it works. Uh, thank you uh, to my guest, uh, Blair White, for uh, attending. Yeah, thanks for having me. Have we ever even spoken before? Or is it one of those where both YouTubers relatively in the same space? So I feel mm -hmm. like I know you. Yeah, like not directly. Yeah. Um, I, I think, uh, like we've talked in DMs before, you know, but yeah. like, not not directly. But yeah, it is like that. It's like, oh, I'll just see what Blair's up to. And I'm like, oh, wait, I don't think I have, we've ever actually even spoken. But yeah, <laughs> um, <clears throat> the uh, yeah, I, I thought, um, particularly of trying to get your opinion, because obviously, I assume you, sp you speak for all trans individuals. Every single um, so, one. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to get uh, kind of your opinion around um, uh, Dylan Mulvaney. Uh, and then, you know, talk about your latest video, because it's kind of a hot topic right now, which is detransitioning. And I have some kind of opinions on that. Um, and then to everyone who's here, Blair's links to our Twitter and YouTube are both in the description. Uh, excellent uh, YouTuber, weak ass work ethic, but like super <laughs> awesome uh, private uh, gun collection, which is amazing. Thank you. Uh, that video like totally blew my mind. <laughs> I was like, I'm definitely gonna have to rob Blair now. Like that's, that's well, a, that was like, a, yeah, <laughs> like ahead, ideally. <laughs> Yeah, but those are like too pretty to fire. You know, I don't know. Like, yeah, they're so it's, cool. It's funny because I have had most of those guns for like around a year and a half now. And I don't know why mm. it never occurred to me to do content around them. And I'm like, wait, I have like the weirdest, craziest gun collection <laughs> ever. Why am I not making a video out of this? So you, I did. And, yeah, and you could have did like one or two of them. And I'm like watching your video and you're like, and this one, and this one, and this one. I'm like... Yeah. How many, Just there's like, going. yeah, there, there was, it was mind blowing. And uh, yeah, whoever um, did that work for you should be, I bet you they got a bunch of work after that. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, I, even I was like, dang, like, I don't have extra guns to make look pretty. But, uh, you know, one day, maybe. Right. You'll get there. Yeah. So uh, what I wanted to, um, and by the way, if you're unfamiliar with Blair, she's been a, a social commentator for years as long as i have been um let me put your uh, youtube channel quick up on the screen uh yeah she's she's been around as long as i have really um yeah, kind of in the same like circles seven years yeah and uh she puts out co consistent content and uh it's all worth uh checking out but what i wanted to get kind of your opinion on was the 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 what seemingly out of nowhere the D Dylan Mulvaney craze you know um, if people don't know Dylan Mulvaney uh, is allegedly trans um, I feel like I have questions around that and it's like super rare for me to ever think that way but right. uh, you know they were at the White House um, they have this Days as a Woman series which to me feels like a troll. But what what do you think? So people have been begging me to talk about this person for a minute. And I've got to make a video. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. There's going to be a main channel video on that for sure. Uh, but I will say that I have to be the bearer of bad news here. Dylan is not a troll, at least in the sense that Dylan is trans. Obviously, a lot of the behavior antics are trollish. However, okay. uh, I, I know a couple of people that no, Dylan, and uh, Dylan's so really it's definitely not an act. It's an act in the sense of Dylan, I think, knows what to do to get attention, which is being as abrasive, obnoxious, and borderline offensive as possible. However, uh, I do think Dylan's really trans. And for me, you know, I Dylan's been on my radar for about a year or how long, mm. actually more like nine months because Dylan's been trans for nine months. Um, okay. but people have been asking me to talk about Dylan. And for me, it's like, I don't know, do I do a video just on someone being cringe? I guess I could, but maybe not. However, it recently mm. escalated to Dylan being at the White House <laughs> yeah, where Dylan was advocating for um, child transgender, transgender surgeries, which, 
you know, if anyone who knows my content knows that I have been vehemently against that since the beginning. So that's when it crossed the territory into, okay, I might need to uh, drag Dylan a little bit. So that's, that's probably coming. Interesting. So, so your position is, and I mean, you probably, I mean, it's like from most of most, I think for most people out there, I never saw this person's content until like last week. And now I can't get away from it. It's literally yeah. everywhere. And um, so, but I felt like, so your opinion is they are indeed trans, but they may also be kind of memeing it up a little bit to, to, to kind of, I mean, it's a shtick or whatever. Yeah. And it's hard to sort of like tell if there's a self-awareness there or not. Uh, mm. But, you know, it, it's, it's hard for me to not see where a lot of like the feminists are coming from when they say that this is offensive in the sense that it sort of is like woman facing or, you know, making fun of women. Because when you're doing a skit about, oh, I'm so scared of bugs and I'm falling on the ground in the forest and heels and oh my gosh, you know, I'm using tampons. It's like, what? <laughs> and the same <laughs> yeah. people who, uh, you know, are going to side with Dylan ideologically are the same people who claim that, you know, misinformation is the biggest threat. But yet Dylan's here spreading misinformation that trans women use tampons. Although I don't think Dylan even classifies himself as a trans woman because Dylan's also obsessed with this concept of girlhood and being a girl, which even if you were to go in line with like, you know, the ideology and say that now Dylan has become a woman, which I don't mm. believe is the case that wouldn't make Dylan a girl. Yeah. I, I thought it was when I watched, uh, when I watched Dylan's video about, I think the tampons were yeah. they have like the tampon out and they're like, where does the string go? Like <laughs> men know that. So when I was like seeing that, I was like, okay, well this is a bit, you know, like first sh this has to be a bit like everyone knows how a tampon works. Um, well, most people do. Um, and so when I see that stuff, so maybe the most logical answer is in fact that Dylan is indeed trans, but also kind of figured out this shtick of being like a, a bimbo. Is that maybe, or like, is that Dylan, the thing? I think Dylan is a, as a self-proclaimed bimbo, which oh, I don't that, know okay. how you, you know, grift your way to the White House as a self-proclaimed bimbo. Um, okay. In some ways it's kind of miraculous. And so shout out to Dylan for achieving that. Yeah, um, I mean... But, I mean, the, but the bar is pretty low, right? I mean, you have people like Rachel Levine in the White House. You have, you know, just this is mm. what's frustrating for me as a trans person is I'm supposed to sit here and be thankful that there is trans representation in the White House and that there is someone speaking to the president of the United States, apparently on my behalf as a trans person. And yet it's a joke. So it's kind of like, I, I don't feel, I'm not happy about it at all. I'm actually pretty disgusted, especially because, you know, Dylan is an adult and Dylan is sitting up there never having um, experienced the negative effects of puberty blockers or of mm -hmm. uh, hormone replacement therapy as a minor and is sitting there advocating for children to go through that. So it's kind of like, screw you. Yeah. And it also when you talk about like representation in the White House, which is, this is a point I, I think you're also making, is that like, it's like trans people are not a monolith, just right. like, you know, straight people aren't a monolith or gay people aren't a monolith. So like, it's not just that there's trans people in the warehouse. They're also super progressive. Um, and we'll all, so like, it's, it's, um, it's that whole, di not diversity of, it's like diversity of appearance or whatever, but not diversity of thought. Um, and so I think that it's, it's really interesting that like Dylan's just in the white house like, I don't know, he's, like their TikTok isn't even that popular. I mean, 9 million followers is not nothing, but I mean. But on TikTok, that's like. 9, that's 000. nothing on TikTok. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, that's so um, let's talk about the the kind of the darker side of this. I'll, I'll share what my opinion, opinion is as a somebody totally unaffected by this. And then you can tell me how I'm wrong. But the so for me, my position's always been pretty lazy in that like, OK, once you're 18, if you can fight and die for this country, then I don't really have anything to say about what you do to your body. Right. Um, when you're when you're under 18, then it's certain people around you's job to protect you. Normally that's parents. Um, sometimes it's the government. Um, that's why you can't smoke cigarettes in, until you're 18. That's not parents saying that. That's a government saying like, oh, you can't do this until, you know, uh, you're old enough to make that decision. 
Um, so the, with the, the surgery stuff really kind of exploded this year. Uh, and then so when Dylan goes to the White House and says, well, states shouldn't decide, that's a little... And Joe Biden, too, total expert. He's just like, oh, he knows all our content, all the everything, you know. And right. um, Joe Biden's like, oh, yeah, I told basically like, yes, I totally agree um, with somebody who's been trans or out as trans. Because I think Dylan at least was gay before, bi before, and then the trans thing is newer. Um, yeah. Well, it's less I mean, than a year, right? Yeah, I think Dylan's on self proclaimed day 200 something. Of being yeah. a girl, so even if I, even if I were to sit here and like be thankful that a trans person is talking to the president, which I'm not, um, it certainly wouldn't be a trans person who's been trans uh, less than a year. Yeah, you know, yeah, person, right. Yeah. Like maybe talk to someone who's been through it, you know, who's been around for a couple of years, who, you know, yeah. uh, as opposed to somebody who's uh, at minimum just experience on the job of <laughs> right. trans. You know, like it's nothing. A couple of months, you know. Right. And, you know, obviously for people who know my content, I come at trans issues from a center right perspective. So, you know, I'm not hoping for some center right, right wing trans person to be talking to the president. I know that's not going to happen. Right. However, yeah. at least not now. How, so I would even be OK if it was like a trans person who's been trans for a few decades, but is like super lived out. Like it, I would even hope that. But nine months, if that like, come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that they have a deep understanding of the struggle. Um, right. it, especially when most of their time is spent like creating content and being an influencer. Um, you know, it's not like a lot of the issues that the trans community is, has even had to deal with in, in the, I mean, in, in terms of like overall history, like yesterday, practically we had the bathroom debate and we're mm -hmm. still having the bathroom debate. Um, we're talking, you know, and so, uh, with, with the, I'm so, what, what's your opinion on the, uh, the sub 18, I happen to find the term gender affirming care very concerning because I think it kind of like, it's a blanket term that doesn't sound scary when you're talking about people chopping pieces, pieces of their body off or adding to it. I think yes. like, um, that that's concerning to me. Well, leftists use language to control, right? So mm -hmm. they'll call the double mastectomies or the sterilization that occurs when a child undergoes these surgeries, they'll call it gender affirming care. They'll claim that it's saving these kids' lives. Meanwhile, what they're actually doing is emotionally blackmailing the parents of these kids and the kids themselves and literally perpetuating a narrative that if they don't get these surgeries, they will off themselves, right? Which is very toxic, you know? You're putting that into these kids' minds. And, you know, if you've ever met a kid, Spoiler alert, they're very malleable. Like they're you can mold their brains. I remember a lot of kids in high school that like were goth and and or right. they were, they were bi in high school. And then like you see them five years later, and it's like, oh, we grew up. You know, some people stay the same. You know, I don't mean to be like, oh, people grow out of being gay. That's you're born that way. But like people have phases, confusion, puberty is very confusing for people. Um, and I, I thought it was weird that when you have like uh just in your lace in your latest video. Uh, you're interviewing somebody who basically, but uh, I think they said they were like fast tracked to surgery, like two months or something like that, right? Or it was very quick, or was it? Yeah. it wasn't very. It was quick. I don't remember the exact time, but yeah. So detransitioners, which is a term to describe people who transition and then obviously detransition, but had some or... surgery typically, right? Right, right. Um, but even if you're just doing hormones, you know, people should understand that when you go through HRT, hormone replacement therapy, as a young person, the effects are irreversible. They're permanent, at least most of them. Some of them are reversible, but sterilization, you know, that's permanent. Um, the individual in my video that I posted today, Casey Miller, who is getting a ton of disgusting hate from the trans community, like almost more than I've ever seen anyone get dogpiled by them before. Um, you know, he, she... It's she now because she's going back to being a girl, which is a bro sex. She has gone almost completely bald, you know, and those hair follicles aren't coming back. That voice isn't going back up. It's like permanently deep. And so, you know, it's it's really doing a disservice to these young people to what often happens is there are issues that are left untreated. So I've spoken to so many of these young people through my podcast and, you know, on my channel and even at events, and they all have the same things in common. They all had underlying issues that were not addressed by mental health professionals. So whether that's, they were, you know, abused as a child, whether that's, you know, they suffer from 
um, uh, extreme autism. Uh, there's just so many things. And unfortunately, transition and the professionals that lead people in this direction have been has been completely overtaken by activists. You, you can't go into a gender clinic that isn't completely populated by activists that have an ideological perspective on this issue rather than a medical one, or at least more of an ideological than a medical. Obviously, there's still medical people, but you know, there's there's a belief system in place that isn't necessarily accurate to the science. And uh, a lot of these kids are falling through the cracks. And unfortunately, you know, detransitioners weren't even a thing a few years ago. Literally, uh, you know, I would say when I first started transitioning, I think it was like 2014. And uh, I actually, at the beginning of mine, looked up detransitioners. I, I wanted to know what happens if I regret this. And I was comforted by the fact that it was almost impossible to find anyone who regretted it because at that time, there were so much more safeguards in place. Um, and even still, there weren't as many as back in the day. Uh, but now you 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 get fast-tracked and you might regret it, <laughs> which it's not like regretting, I don't know, a, a piercing you can take out or even a tattoo you can get lasered off. You are devastating your reproductive system, especially as a female. So it's a lot. Sorry, I'm rambling. No, 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 that's good. Um, you know, and I think what's interesting is, um, you know, I've, I've felt like there's going to be a period now where the, the percentage of people not I don't this is just a perception you may know different but it feels like more people now are doing these type of things and I feel like in in the net it won't be that long five ten years from now uh where there's going to be like lawsuits where people are like oh I was co coerced into this yeah. I was pushed through this and you know the the, the fact that you have uh the the money behind it uh which is concerning you have like the um, was it boston college they had like uh, they were like basically saying oh wow, how much money we make doing this um uw madison we're like people just point out the website and then they delete it it's right. not a good look it's like well wait i mean what are you worried about if um you know if if everything's on the up and up um well, there's a, built in, there's a built in um, system against these detransitioners, right? Because if you think about um, a more cosmetic surgery that people that aren't trans undergo, let's say a nose job, right? Those doctors are not going to advertise people who are upset with the nose jobs they got. Right. They're not right. going to, they're not going to be open to discussing it. And so you have these detransitioners who are saying, um, hi, I can never have children of my own. Hi, I have bodily parts that are removed or altered. They're, it's not as if they're going to get a platform by these doctors. It's only a bad look for the doctors. And you're right, it's on its way to become a billion dollar industry. And, uh, you know, people say follow the science. I say follow the money. It's like yeah. these kids are, you know, another important aspect. There's so much to this. But, you know, when you are trans, you are a medical patient for life. This is whether you transition as an adult or a child. You mm. are, you know, I, I am on estrogen. My body does not make estrogen because I'm biologically male, which means I will have to receive synthetic estrogen for the rest of my life, at least until the age when biological women undergo um, menopause. menopause and then yeah. um, but, you know, the rest is, is you're a medical patient for life. So you talk about how the economy is going the way of subscription mm. services. This is a subscription service. These kids yeah. are on the hook for life paying these doctor's bills. Yeah. And even if you have the surgery, you're still, you're still on, you know, you're still taking pills. You're still taking, you're still doing doctor visits. That is a, that is an interesting point because it is, it's like, um, it's like, uh, with cosmetic surgery, for example, like, uh, elect now, some people will say it's elective, some people won't, whatever I qualified as, and so at least as an elective surgery, these so are I big money makers. Like this is the, this is like the new plastic surgery. Um, where a lot of plastics now, I don't know what the real numbers are of people get, you know, having these surgeries, you know, how the internet makes it seem like there's a hundred thousand people going under the knife every month, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not, it's, it's a non-zero number. And what's worth, con what's concerning to me is like, when it's like they're 14 and then you have like Planned Parenthood putting out this ad that's like, Hey, it's super, totally fine to take puberty blockers when you're, it's just like using, hitting the stop sign. And it's just like. What's that? I said disgusting. Like, yeah, it's creepy. Like they're just making it like it's no big deal. And it's like, first of all, uh, this sci this this science on this is pretty new. Um, considering look at all the science around other things that are changing now. But the um, you know, so to kind of advertise it in that way feels predatory and yes. like 
I'm not sure that, and you probably know this, but I don't know what the science is or what the statistics are. I've heard it both ways, and I don't know if either of them are true, but you know that getting these surgeries doesn't necessarily fix um, the kind of self deletion problem in in the community either. Now, am I wrong about that? No, you're not wrong because unfortunately, due to the fact that there is such an ideology attached to being trans now, in fact, even the term transgender is new. You know, in in yesteryear, I would be considered what is a transsexual, which is mm -hmm. like the classic medical definition of someone who undergoes a sex change. Like that is what it is. Um, and now you have transgender, which is this huge umbrella term. And even within that, you know, there's such an ideology that there's a step one, step two, and step three to this, which is you get the surgery and you're happy. It's really not the case. You know, when I got, you know, my surgeries and I felt like I was at a place where I was done with my transition, there was this interesting wall that I hit where I was like, oh, there's still the rest of my life to live. I still have to build a mm -hmm. career. I still have to like find a partner. I still have to find, you know, just so much. Um, mm -hmm. And transition is definitely presented as this fairy tale and fix all to problems, which is also bad because it's treated as it will cover other problems. So um, a really interesting thing that all these kids who end up regretting this have in common, and I say all, and it's literally almost all, because I've spoken to so many now and I see these narratives online. A lot of them have a lot of internalized homophobia and people may have an aversion to like that phrase and think it's like some lived out phrase, but I think it is real. You know, there are people who grow up and they hate the fact that they're gay. They're running from that at maximum velocity. And sometimes that includes transitioning because I saw you mention that. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of mind blowing where, yeah, it's um, not sorry to cut you off, but that yeah. was, I saw that in your, in the latest video where it's like, that actually made a bit of sense to me where it's like, well, I, I'm not gay if I transition to female and date uh, men uh, right. or vice versa, which is like, that seems pretty extreme. Yeah. But like also, I mean, People do weird stuff all the time. They talk themselves into it, right? And there's precedent for this in other countries. I also touched in the video today that in the Middle East, they do this to gay people all the time. All the time, you yeah. You can go to yeah. prison for being gay unless you get a sex change and now you're a woman. It, it's Over there, it's like we look at that as such a barbaric practice and we condemn that and we say that that is so anti-gay and they're erasing gay people. And here it's like, I don't know, like it's just like a common practice. It must happen, people. yeah. Right. I think and Sid. I think Sid did a video on that, like transing the gay away, and I was like, "Dang!" I think yeah, Iran or or whatever. I was like, a, a, a not insignificant amount of people, mm -hmm. and um, and it was like, that's one heck of a loophole. Like, uh, you know, these these people are having these surgeries, and so you would think that there's a non-zero amount of people that do feel that way. That they're just like, "Oh, well, yeah. maybe I'm just a woman stuck in a man's body, so I'll just instead of just being gay." Right, like whatever. Right, and they they say I'm trans now. Yeah, and it's by no means that I'm sitting here painting the picture that there is like no right way to be a trans person. I am so specifically talking about kids right now. Yeah. Um, there are adults who transition and regret it as well, but in a lot of ways, I do feel like you know, even though there's a lot of predatory sort of like patient doctor behavior, even with adults in this in this space, um, you know. It, to a certain extent, if you're an adult, it is on you, right? And I think it takes a very specific type of person to transition to do it successfully and to integrate into society and, and live a positive life, which is the supposed desired outcome. And I still struggle to understand what it is within myself that I've somehow managed to do that. And it's not mm -hmm. like I'm the only one, there's plenty of others. But um, I think that it first comes from a place of like, you can't hate yourself when you decide to transition. Like a lot of these kids really yeah. hate themselves, you know? I never hated myself. I just felt like I could improve my life through this and I did. Whereas a lot of these kids, they grow up and maybe their parents are, you know, harming them physically because they're gay or they're being bullied because they're gay. And it seems like a, you know, entry into the straight world. Um, and they're not entirely wrong, but if they do transition, um, you know, successfully that they are somewhat, somewhat in the straight world, you know, I've never fit okay. in the gay world. So uh, it's just a, a whole lot of mess. And it's this train that is clearly going to go over the cliff very, very soon. It already kind of is half the trains off the cliff. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of, you know, trying to get it back on track, which these D trans people really are, are helping that. Um, but then you have all these trans influencers that are doing the exact opposite. And, and well, it needs to be safe, legal and rare. Remember that terminology? Like, right. the, you know, like where it's, um, 
you know, I think if when you're an adult, look, I have like, I don't have anything to say. You're 18 years old in one minute. You do what you want. It's fine by me. Um, and it, I think I worry though, when people talk about the statistics around, you know, <laughs> making it, if yeah. you're trans, I, I worry that that makes parents feel like this weird pressure. Like, well, if I don't do this, my child isn't going to make it. And we don't really have enough data on the people that have done these things. Certainly there are people that have done it and are happy. I, I, I imagine there certainly, you know, there certainly is, but I worry about people doing it when they're 14, 15, 16 years old. Right. I can't even remember any decisions I made at 14. Honestly. I mean, I, I you know how many people have bad tattoos that they got on their 18th birthday. I've had bad. I got a bad tattoo on my 18th birthday. I did too. <laughs> I got yeah. a vegan symbol and guess who isn't vegan anymore? <laughs> yeah, I have one. I have one of all my friends, you oh, know, gosh. my best friends forever. <laughs> we all got the same tattoo. Haven't seen those guys in 15 years. <laughs> and I often think about like, oh, I'll just laser it off one day, you know? So like yeah. it's, and like, that's just tattoo. That's not like a double mastectomy. Um, right. It, it's, it's, but at 18, whatever it's, it's, I mean, I assume that this will lead my my opinion is that this leads to uh, eventual lawsuits that will set precedents that will make this suddenly not as uh, recommendable. Um, I don't know though. Maybe not. There's a certain degree of probably of like, well, I did this. Now I gotta like. I wonder how many people really because the people like you said who come out as a detransitioner they get crushed. They've got nobody. Like if you're already feeling alienated, um, now you do that and you just, you know, you got right. nothing, you know? And what's really concerning is that you have the full force of the White House behind this, right? I mean, I, listen, when I transitioned in 2014, it was such a different political climate. And maybe at that time, if there would have been a trans, It wasn't even a thing back then, really. Well, like it was, in the but mainstream. It was really medical. It wasn't ideological, which I think is the yeah. very important difference. You know, um, like trans people have been around for a long time, but this new ideology that's, you know, clung onto it, that is very new. And that's the thing that's convincing all these kids that they are trans. That is responsible for the social contagion. Um, the fact that this occurs in friend groups, guess what else occurs in friend groups? Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't want to say the word on here and get you demonized. Yeah. C U T ing. You right. Know, yeah. 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 You have, you know, well, disorders. trans trenders are a thing. Like I can't yeah. really, it's so like when I, when I try to have a frank conversation about this, I'm totally self-aware. So like, I can't, I don't even really cover trans stuff that often on my channel because like my opinion is like, I'm aware, you know, like yeah. I can't be like, oh, well they're, you know, gee, I wonder if like, when you see these charts where like 50% of Gen Z is LGBT, it's some huge number. I'm like, come on. Right. Like, no, it's just not possible. Now, I wonder why maybe it has something to do with all the social credit people get on places like TikTok. And right. also um, the I don't know, I, I forget how it was described. One of the uh, I'll, I'm going to actually look this up because it was like, um, what do you think about this, too? It's a statement that I often kind of discuss. Um, this is from somebody in Hollywood that said, and I quote, there happened to be in my. Shit, I'm not showing my screen. Okay, I'm not. It was like, um, they said to me, hold on, I have it right here. It was like, trans people have like giga power or something like, like they, they're like, you, you can't frick with them. They have like incredible power uh, socially. I wonder if there's something attractive about that for someone feeling young and powerless. You know, right. maybe. And it's something that I am very self-aware about. In fact, I have these conversations with my friends all the time because the interesting, the interesting thing is that even though obviously I've made a living and a career off talking about these issues, you know, my channel is very trans heavy when it's not guns, it's just trans shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, a normal uh, combination. You see that, yeah, a, a normal combination of content, yeah. Right. Uh, but, you know, in my real life, it's like, almost a complete non-factor. Like my friends often will literally tell me like, I forgot you're trans until I saw you posted a trans video today. I'm like, yeah. But so yeah. I, I have this conversation with them all the time where I'm like, you know, I could wield this power that society has given me that I didn't ask for in so many different ways. I could be getting people fired from restaurants. Oh I my God. Be, yeah. 
That's applying easy. for, you know, loans. You can interview the president. I couldn't do that because. Well, if you were a liberal, you could. Yeah. Right. If, if I was a liberal, I would have a sh- I would have three shows on CNN. I was just I would... gonna say. I was just gonna say. I was like, <laughs> if you're a liberal, you'd be on TV, like for sure. Oh, for yeah. sure. Right. Yeah. But I'm I'm a I'm a grifter by yeah. choosing the path fake trans. most resistance, not least yeah. most resistance, which is having a career in the right wing as a trans person. Yeah. Uh, but that's grifting. But then if all these people, if I was sitting here saying white people are evil and, um, you know, trans women are women, then I'd be on CNN. Uh, Guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you'd, so have fewer, and you'd have fewer viewers on CNN than you do on your YouTube channel. By the way, congrats on passing a million. Thanks. Yeah. It's yeah. been, it's awesome. You're over a million as well. It's crazy how yeah. it takes a long time to get there. But when you get there, it's like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Um, right. Now I can play the game. <laughs> right. Right. It feels like you can yeah. play the game, huh? Uh, but yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct that there is a power that's given to trans people. And unfortunately, because anyone can just self-identify as trans, there's so many branches of this. Um, anyone can really attain the power. So if you wanted to wear a party city wig next week and say that you're trans. Um, that's one of my all time favorite burns, by the way, like I can't wield it, but I've seen it between in particular women. Uh, and it just gets me every time like, I just crack up with the party city wig burns like <laughs> it's just every time like uh I, I don't know what it is there used yeah. there used to be a youtuber well he's still around but he used to make fun of uh back when you could crack wise about like okay hmm, how can i word this if you can see people that are trying to present what they want you to believe they are and then there are people you can tell just aren't trying at all but still want is that makes yeah, sense yeah, where yeah. i'm going like yeah, like passing um, versus non-passing is kind of the phrase. Yeah, yeah, and like not even like from a not even like from a like a physiological standpoint or doing your makeup, but it's like oh, I just took a party city wig and I put it on my head. I'm trans now. Like that. Uh, that is a that felt like a thing uh, for some time, but that's a really dangerous path to go down. Try calling out people like that. That's right, and it's people <laughs> like that that end up, you know these people that don't put in the effort because if if you're actually trans it's not as if it's like wanting to put the effort in it's like you do want to it's kind of built in you know part part of of, yeah right yeah part of me being trans was like i don't want it to be a big deal when i walk in places i would just people i want people to just default as she and not think about it that was the entire thought process short and sweet whereas now you know you walk around and there's people that have identities that need validation from strangers consistently Mm -hmm. that need you know, special pronouns. And it's like, you can live like that, but the expectation for people to bend to your whims, I don't know what that is. That That's that's the furthest thing from humble. Not that I think anyone has to be humble, but like maybe just don't be a narcissist. <laughs> like, yeah. And um, by the way, for those watching, uh, this is uh, Blair White. Her YouTube channel is linked in the description as well as her Twitter. That is, um, this is something I've, I talk about on my channel as like your boring old uh, straight white guy. I, I often talk about the trans brand and like how your ambassadors suck ass. Yeah. Like, and um, it's like, um, I see on Twitter, like I saw a couple of tweets like, oh my God, Dylan Mulvaney's like the representative of trans people now. Like, you know, like, and I'm, and they're coming from trans people, you know, like they're coming from people where it's like, you know, most of the trans people I interact with are uh like far lefty activists lunatics on twitter Mm -hmm. and that's a bad sample size you know what i mean like most and the people and the trans people i've met in real life are just like i know it sounds stupid they're just like anyone else like they're not screaming at you they're not we had we you know and i live in a small town but even i have interacted with trans folks in my life and none of them have been like psychopaths like none of them have been weird, screechy, respect my pronouns people. I remember one time I, um, the, um, a, a girl, a, a trans male, what, um, she had changed her name. I knew her as her old name. And it was like, I, she said, oh, hey, I go by this now. And that was like, it, it wasn't like, hey, you piece of, you know, transphobic piece of garbage okay. and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, okay, well, that's totally fine. But then you get these like, uh, oh my God, what's the one in Canada? Um, the teacher? No, no. Um. She was, uh, oh. Jessica, you Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, but like PTSD. <laughs> yeah. God. But like, like 
Right. I think that trans community needs to police their spokespeople a little bit better. Like well, it's the, like they got to get these lunatics out of uh, out of representing them. I agree. And one of the, I guess, unfortunate realities of trans people is that, you know, I don't know if I would say the majority are these peaceful people that don't want any problems. I mean, I, sometimes I also let the internet skew my sort of view of like the yeah. community, but but I know there's a lot more than people think, right? Like I, I too interact with trans people all the time, especially, you know, being who I am, like I get stopped on the street by them and some of them yeah. you wouldn't even There's know the more trans. trans people in my chat right now than, I, than I've ever been in my chat. Like, right. you know, they, so you do interact with them by yeah. your by mere existence, yeah. Right, it, but the problem is, you know, going back to what I said a few minutes ago about how the goal for me was just to walk into a room and have people default as she and for there to never be any problems, that is most trans people's goals or at least a lot of them. And so those people are quiet and those people are, I'm not going to say weak, but perhaps meek. And they're not the type of people to shout down these crazy activists. When you have these, you know, freaking, you know, Jessica Neves and the green hair. With Wax the my balls, them. bigot. Right. It's like, who's wants to shout over that? You know, I, I'm willing to try to shout over it because for whatever reason, I'm a loud mouth, but most people in that community are not. And so you have a natural sort of like imbalance of the people that are going to make I, it to the white house are the loudest most obnoxious most stupid and most harmful and then you have all these other people that are just trying to live their lives and have normal jobs and a lot of them don't even want to be out of the closet there's this concept of living as stealth right there's this concept yeah, of yeah. like no one needs to even know i'm trans other than my family and my partner which is totally and that's based different. like i think that's probably more people than than people think and they're right. just like um you know i think uh that's a good observation about and by the way i think that that's like uh to use trudeau's term humankind it's a human thing to not want to like rock the boat that's not even a trans thing or an lgbtq yeah. thing it's like oh my god like i watched this video today i don't know if you saw it, it was going kind of viral um this hotel worker some total douchebag was like yelling at her um because he booked the wrong room and blah 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 Eventually, some guy like behind him was like, "Hey, take it easy, asshole! Like, what are you right. doing? Like, this girl's making ten bucks an hour, and you're, you know, but like, that's rare. Like, mm -hmm. I th often think about like, it's easy to like fantasize about being there, be like, yeah, I would have totally told him off. Right. But, like, I've been there when somebody acts like acts crazy, or like I'm at the bar and some dude's yelling at his wife or something, and I look around like, people just don't want to." really insert themselves they're just trying to get through their day and, and live their life which is how those people take advantage of of that you know no one's going to stop yeah. me so i'm just going to keep pushing it 100 percent. but what's so unfortunate is like so i live one of the best possible scenarios as a trans person right like i'm my own boss i have a partner i you know have friends i'm I have a support system like i'm i'm good uh and even still, I find myself in social settings where maybe the trans issue comes up or, or you know, whatever. And I can feel like the tension that is coming from the other person's end, not necessarily because they think I'm a problem, but because they just want to make sure there's no problems. They want to make sure they're not like stepping on any toes. And so it's even someone like me who's living in a quiet, you know, for lack of a better phrase here, privileged situation when it comes to being trans, I'm feeling the ramifications of like being painted with this brush of all these freaking crazy people. And it's like, that must really That's gotta suck. suck. Yeah, you know, like, I'm like, I don't I, want people to think I'm crazy just by, I mean, I am crazy. And frankly, being trans is crazy. Clearly. <laughs> but uh, but uh, what's interesting is um, my best friend, Michael Malice, like he has this thing he always says about me. He's like, you know, being trans is actually the least crazy thing about you. And I'm like, yeah, that's probably true. I'd probably buy that. Yeah. The, he, Malice is a truth speaker. The, yeah. Yeah. It, it is um, an interesting thing. Um, and by the way, there, there are people that have um, done some super chats with some specific questions for you. I'm going to, I told them I'll read them. You got to leave it like 620. I'm going to read them at 620. So I can get you okay. out of here at 630. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. I'm down okay. to answer any questions. So. That's yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. And, and um, I'm down to uh, grift off of you too. So it's great for me, by the way, go subscribe to Blair's channel uh, and follow her on Twitter and send um, Jeremy lots of super chats. Yes, that's right. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, it, so what do you think the um, kind of the end game is of the, this, is it going to be on the presidential elections? Do you think we're going to be debating this right in the presidential, like, is this the new late term abortion? 
uh, debate um, topic? I hope so. And the reason I say I hope so is because these kids have to be saved. You know, there's literally kids' lives on the lines. Um, there are kids that are not making it into their adult years without their bodies being mutilated and yeah. the inability to have children. And, you know, it's hard to sort of pin down how many of them there are. But, you know, we do know that there's been like, what is it, like a 300% increase in, you know, trans. Oh, yeah. Women. That's frightening. Right. And there's gender clinics popping up everywhere and the industry is becoming so big. So you can only imagine how many kids are going through this. And uh, I hope to God it's an issue. You know, I, I don't mean to get super partisan here. I, I think I'm probably further right than you, but it's like, to mm -hmm. me, it's like, can you even make it through like life as like a child of like leftist parents? It's like if you're not aborted before the womb, you end up like... <laughs> Okay, yeah. transitioned by 13. It's like, Jesus Christ, it should be an issue and we should be debating it. And we shouldn't be allowing the president of the United States to be advocating for puberty blockers, which by the way, they've recently come out and said puberty blockers can cause brain swelling and loss of vision. Among the other things we already know that they cause. Infertility. Infertility, yeah, osteoporosis. Um, and just the very basic concept of like trapping a human in a child mindset. If you're not going through puberty, that is the mechanism that creates an adult. That's the mechanism yeah. that, you know, starts maturing your thought process. And I don't want to live in a society where even 5% of people I interact with didn't go through puberty. Uh, yeah, right. That you'd that you'd be a pedophile. I mean, it's just like the um, you'd have. It, it's a weird. Um, it's a it's a weird thing how politicized it's gotten, which is unfortunately the world we live in. Like whatever, um, like canned refried beans you buy is like a political decision. Right. But I I wish that some like so I uh I I won't, I won't name him. I did do a live stream with a guy who had a, a trans kid who was fourteen. And he was a really nice guy. I liked him a lot. Um, Jesus Christ, J Mac. Um, the uh, the and he was like basically talking about they got it all planned out. Fourteen years old, all planned out. We're gonna, you know, start uh, hormones and we're gonna do this and do that. I'm like, your kid's fourteen, bro. Like, right. let him be ha like an awkward fourteen year old for a little bit. Like, That's I'm not good. sure that what's the what's the real drawback to making him wait a little bit. Right. And you know, that is the thing though. It's that you, you touched on it. You're like, the parent was such a nice guy. It's like, that's the thing. It's like a lot of these parents have the best intentions, but they're being gaslit by professionals who tell them their kid's going to delete themselves if they don't do this, you know, these crazy procedures. And these parents, a lot of them, well, let me, let me you not love give your them. kid. You know, right. you want to do right. Let me not give them too much though, because there are those parents that have the best of intentions. And there are also those weird narcissistic parents who want their kids to be trans. You know, I was watching this documentary about um, psychic kids recently, right? Mm. Like kids who supposedly <laughs> of can course, speak. Of course, of course they were. Yeah, yeah, okay. And guess who was so much more excited about having a camera crew than the kid, the parents. Oh, and I was like, this is literally the same thing as the transparent thing. You have these, um, you know, Remember those two who, transparents who are, uh, who's, who's, who's eight-year-old just also happened to be trans? That's like that's like less likely than winning the Powerball. Like that that's I mean it's sick. one in a zillion chance. And that like one, that one makes me sick. And I'll tell you yeah. why it makes me sick because you know, I don't know where I'm at with being a parent one day. You know, I'm 29 mm -hmm. so I'll probably figure it out soon and obviously that would be through adoption or right. whatever mechanism I choose. However, if I do I, I, it's so offensive to me, this concept of like, I'm trans, so therefore my child is going to, I hope to God my child is not trans. In fact, if there's even like that's a- That's an uphill battle. You know, that's, you, yeah. If there's even a 5% chance that me being trans can somehow influence my kids who believe that they are trans, I will not and do not want kids. Seriously. Mm. I mean, 5% is, is way too high for me. I'm just throwing numbers out there, but you know what I mean? It's like, right. why would I ever want anyone to go through- what I went through, even, even at the point where like my results have been positive and it's like, for what, like, I would want my kids to live a normal life and go have a husband or a wife or, or you know, in fact, I, I'd even want them to be straight. You know, I, I wouldn't hate my child if they were gay. I would support them. I love gay people. My friends are gay. A lot of them. However, I wouldn't want way, that's the life new, for my child. Yeah. That's the new conservative, by the way, all these old, like, uh, boomer cons are dying off. Mm -hmm. Like, when when the left tries to use like oh it's just include like acceptance of gay people against the right i'm like give it like five years 
Like nobody cares about that. Nobody cares anymore. Like be gay. I don't care. Like yeah. it doesn't matter. You have like the super hardcore religious people. And even they're like, well, they're going to hell, but whatever. Like it's yeah. still not like what it was so much longer ago. And um, it feels like, well, now we're going to worry about um, the kids and it's going to become this like, oh, also uh, the parents thing I wanted to make a point of. I, I believe there's also a non-zero amount of parents who, you know, these parents are like, oh, my eight-year-old, oh, there's this interview, you probably saw it. I think I even did a video on it. We're like, I knew my child was trans at eight years old. And I'm like, Ugh. then they're like, oh, you know, she just liked to wear girls, boys clothes and this and that. I'm like, Disgusting. I put on my parent, my mom's bra when I was like a kid. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't mean I'm trans for crying out loud. And it was, it was just so weird, but you know, the cameras in their face, they got an interview on uh, NBC right. or whatever the case is. Am I hosting and... the show now? Why don't I see Jeremy? Oh, am I gone? Uh... Hold on. Okay. Wait, are you good? Yeah, you froze. Oh, oh, okay. I did. Okay. Damn, um, you sat Starlink internet. Well, I was talking okay. about the parent, the, their parents, like who, um, you know, it seems like, uh, you know, oh, I just knew as they're doing like a documentary. And then I'm like, man, you know, sometimes a kid just puts on his mom's dress. It ain't that deep, you know? And to, to kind of touch on that, it's like, you know, I definitely was like feminine as a kid. I mean, I, I have feminine yeah. mannerisms. My voice never dropped in puberty, which was super weird, but I still was into like boy stuff. Like I was playing Power Rangers. I was playing like Pokemon cards with my friends. Like, yeah. um, like I was still had these interests and it's like, I still ended up this way. So it's not as if those are the things that define what a person is. And, you know, even if I was into only girly stuff and wanted to play with Barbies 24 seven, et cetera, as a kid, I could have just ended up a happy gay male. That could have been my narrative too. So it's like, why can't that be? You have to let people live their lives out on a long enough timeline to figure out who they are. I'm 29 and still figuring out who I am. I don't know how old you are, Jeremy, but 39. Like, Right. And I'm sure, I'm yeah, sure you're still I'm, learning about yourself once a year at least. Yeah. Right. And I'm, yeah. And I'm still like asking myself the same questions I, I were, I was 10 or even 15 years ago. There's some things I figured out, but then as you get older, there's more complicated questions. Like, do I want to have kids? I'm 39. It's kind of late to have kids. Uh, do I want to be like that old guy, dad, when like my kid's 15 and now I'll be right. almost 60. Like, these are questions you don't ask yourself when you're 20, but like, yeah, things are, are, are complex. And I think, um, by the way, I really appreciate, uh, you, you coming on and sharing these. I want to uh, get to a couple of the questions people had for you because, um, I thought that, you know, well, that would be fair. Let's do it. Um, and then, um, you know, in the meantime, if, if you all haven't followed her or subscribed, and of course, if you're watching on replay, definitely check out her channel. Um, so evil zombie toast says, I got my coffee and coffee ready. Let's go. Yeah, good for you. Uh, God says, uh, is she going to buy you more vodka? Probably. Um, oh, baby. Okay. The, the, uh, <laughs> baby and Alvarez Blair, why did you drink Jeremy's bottle of booze? <laughs> so there is a ancient Wait, did this happen? lore. There's ancient lore between us that I've Ooh. hated you for a very long time. So angry about it. Um, I'm not really angry. Like I, I bring it up ironically and people think like, you know, you're like, you're, yeah. you know, the internet, right? The first time I met you. Okay. Was in Milwaukee, uh, at, uh, somebody's house. I don't want to name them, but we were at a house. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, I uh, <laughs> you took my bottle of Tito's off the counter and just walked out with shoe on head. I'm like, Hey bitch, that was I'm my so bottle. Sorry. You like walked in, you're like doing the snap thing. You take the bottle, <laughs> which you probably thought like, which you probably thought was just like at the, the party. You know what I mean? Like it was just a bottle for people to drink. But then I think that night I was like, fucking barrel of Blair White stole my vodka. But, like, <laughs> Oh my uh, God, so that's so ignorant of me. I probably well, thought it was like complimentary or something. Well, it was like sitting on the counter. It wasn't like it was in my pocket. And you took it out. <laughs> so like. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I don't I mean, really, I don't drink anymore if that's if that um amends things because like drinking's just overrated. I'm more of a yeah, I don't drink anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Uh evil zombie toe, any chance to stream on Rumble? Uh, not tonight, but I will. I've streamed there normally. American Badger. Will Jeremy 
simp or white knight as much for Blair? Yes, I will. People, you know, I have uh, female, like I do with Podcast Sydney. People get butthurt when I don't let people talk shit about her. And like, they call it simping, but you know, I don't well, care. Simping is nice. Why would, what, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I know. Why talk about her either. It's called being a friend. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's called not being, you know, like you can disagree, but if you're just saying mean stuff, then I'll just, you know, I'll call it out. Um, so then uh, James says, Dylan Mulvaney is like Monty Python folks playing middle-aged British housewives, but younger and as and as far from funny as possible. Uh, right. Blair, <laughs> uh, thoughts on the word trap? There's some dank fans in, the, in here. Uh, so I believe the word trap, that's pretty outdated now, right? It's not it like is. Internet, like when, I hear, when I hear trap now, I think of music. Um, yeah. Or like um, selling drugs. The only person that's called me that in recent times is Michael Malice because he's old. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think we should move on from that phrase now. <laughs> yeah, we need a new one. Uh, Grofty says uh, seems almost planned and strange. Or I think he's he's talking about um, kind of the re the uh, rise. It's almost like a, what's the term? Astroturf. Like uh, suddenly Dylan Mulvaney's everywhere. Like, geez, it's almost like it's inorganic. Um, right. Uh, Sassy says they needed to find someone on Biden's intelligence level. Lars Yob says, first thing I thought when I saw Mulvaney is this guy's literally pulling a Bugs Bunny. Um, <laughs> Ren Muskrat says, how do you feel about Dave Smith and the misses? Is that, I don't know. I don't know either one of them. I is that a deep Smith lore? is a libertarian, I believe, anarchist. Oh, not I and the misses. It says Dave Smith and misses. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I don't know anything about his wife, but I met him briefly recently at Michael's house, actually. And uh, he was cool. He seems pretty smart. I mean, cool. yeah, I'd like to have him on one day. Mm -hmm. Sad Dan says gender euphoria. You might mean dif um, gender dysphoria, but I'm not sure. Gender euphoria, even in many EU nations, is starting to be, quote, canceled as a medical condition because feelings. Yeah, it is a it? real phrase. Um, I believe it's just like the opposite of dysphoria, which is like, you're like super oh, it is okay. It is euphoric. Yeah, I don't okay. really know what it means, really, TBH, but it's a thing, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Grafty says once, uh, once done, dollar signs appear above the head of those chosen to. He's talking about transitioning and being a patient for life. Children yeah. should not be money generators. I agree. Redline says being trans is seen as inherently political these days, and I hate it. My own community being horrible, and some of the opposition that sees the individual as an extension of that. How to how to reintegrate? Um, I agree. Yeah. I hate that I'm yeah. like a walking, talking political advertisement in the eyes of some people. And granted, I do political commentary, but I mean, the fact that I'm trans is not inherently political. Yeah. Well, nowadays, being like people's not so much with trans, but people's like gender identity is their identity, which is yeah. where, it, which is why you can't criticize people without them. You're gonna stop attacking me. Um, well, it's it's boring people's replacement for a hobby. Yes, a job, a something interesting to say. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent agree. I I say that all the time. Like, if you have some bizarro pronouns, just that's a way to tell me you don't have anything interesting to say. Yeah, um, why get a job, a hobby, or a husband when you can just be non-binary? Yeah, right. I mean, that's what I would do. Uh, Sixty-two-year-old straight male. Damn, an honest conversation on trans issues. Now that's progress. Be more honest. Talk. Uh, evil me says as a trans woman myself i see a lot of 18 to 20 males that seem to transition as a sort of fetish that's just the people in my area also i see too many lgbt who base their entire personality about gender orientation thoughts well yeah yeah this is one of those un like maybe unfortunate isn't the right word but one of those uncomfortable topics which is that there are multiple reasons why someone wants to be trans right there right. is there are people who because it's their gender identity and that's what they feel and there's people who get their rocks off from it. And those are the people that are the Jessica Yanis of the world that have yeah. some sort of fetish from feminizing themselves because, I mean, okay. anything, there's a fetish for anything, right? It's like this Like plastic. the shop teacher, maybe. Huh? Like the Canadian yeah. shop teacher. Oh, not even maybe. I talked about that. I mean, know, yeah. I mean, you did a video on it. But I mean, like, that's clearly a kink, right? I mean, that's... Oh, 100%. Yeah. Like, you don't... You're not trying to just get by with quadruple Z fake prosthetic anime boobs like right you want people to look at you you want people to you know and worse a certain way 
worse, he wants kids to look at him because he's working in a school. So it goes to a whole <laughs> yeah. other level. And then you have these like basic ass, like white lived out people who will defend it at all costs because they think they're somehow not defending trans people if they don't include yeah. that. And it's like, actually you're hurting them, but okay. Yeah. That's a shockingly transphobic statement from you, Blair. Fabian Alver Alvarez says, Blair, would you ever debate Mark Meachin here? I see another trap thing coming. She knows who Count Dankula is. He's a small YouTuber with a channel dedicated to traps and the question. He believes they are not gay. Oh, that that question. The uh, are traps gay question. Uh, oh. She knows who Dank is. Yeah, I think I've like interacted with him. Isn't he yeah. like a candy chaser or not? Well, I mean, yeah, that's yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> I mean, like he uh I wish I should say that he uh he does not just he's a man of culture, maybe is that what if I say it that way? Very specific uh, culture. Yeah. <laughs> uh he's a straight man, but he will also uh um indulge in the bussy. Is that am I using the correct terminology there? <laughs> Alex Miller said uh, uh thank you. Random uh Cairo Cairo Perda. Sorry, I can't read. Wondering if I'll ever see Blair in videos with Tom McDonald again. Did you do a video with Tom? Yeah, I was um, in one of his music videos. Uh, oh, right on. One of the most just like amazing experiences. I walked on set and, you know, I've never done a music video before. It was like a completely new experience. And I thought I was going to have maybe a small cameo. And I was I was a like the, I was the co-star of it. It has 20 million views on YouTube. So it's easily the most viewed thing I've ever been a part of. So, I, yeah, I hope I will. I hope I will. Yeah. Tom's a good dude. He, he, mm -hmm. um, he's, he's always like, even before he, like, even while he was pretty famous, like he would always return my DMS and we just never really connected, but like, I'm not a big rap guy, but I respect his game and his music yeah. and his, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, magnificent devil says, I'm going to, I'm going to try to chair. I'll get all of them. I'm going to try to cherry pick the ones for Blair. Cause I told her I get out of here. I let her get off in an hour here. <laughs> let her off. No, I can't. Okay. Once, uh, once a leftist activist do too much damage, they'll just disappear into the woodwork and trans people who never wanted to be a part of that will have to pay for it. Also, true. hi, Blair, big fan. Big true. Yeah, big true. true. Yep, yep. Um. So uh, Red Muskrat says, eventually it won't even be hard to change your DNA. What does that world look like? I don't know. Uh, so, probably not that different than today, except people are, I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty happy with who I am. I don't think I would change my DNA, but, um, you know, whatever. I'm sure we'll be there someday. Yeah. Uh, we're not that far away from Neuralink. Anyway, uh, Sassy Ghost says there's many bad actors in the LGBTQ plus community now. Too many are using the label to feel like they fit into what currently is the most popular group. And it's sad. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I agree with you. Um, <laughs> J Mac. Oh, J Mac brought it up for, for, for $200 that I hope you guys, Buried the hatchet over the VidCon vodka incident. It was MythCon, but yeah. Oh my God. Uh, so this has been a thing. I had no idea this was a thing. I don't know. Well, that people know it's like <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't really a, you know, it's like a, an ironic thing. Yeah. Like, yeah people yeah. are bringing you up. I'm like, yeah, the bitch has stole my vodka. But like, you know no, what? Next time I see you at whatever event that we're both yeah. a part of, I will bring you a bottle of vodka. Yeah. We shared my first um, uh, forced evacuation together, I think um yeah, i remember that that was so yeah funny. yeah so yeah <laughs> um so then okay i found an activist pipeline with training mats on direct action fronting as lgbt support line that gets city funding using federal money from the infrastructure bill no less what should i do i don't email me and i'll i'll, I'll put it out on twitter um oh oh uh jay also says Happy to see you cover this stuff, Jerry Bear. Also, my wife loves your content, Blair. Thank oh. you. Shout out to your yeah. wife. Yeah, she's a she's a woman of culture as well. So, um, Blair, I want to give you the floor. Um, what uh, what do you have coming up? I know you just dropped a video today that people should check out, obviously. But um, what do you got coming up that people should check out? And and uh, you know, this is your this is your time to to shill for yourself. Yeah, uh, so much. I mean, I'm the kind of person that I just take everything sort of like in stride and wherever this weird career that I stumbled upon takes me, I go there. But right now I'm working on a book. Um, I have a new podcast called The Blair White Project. Uh, okay. Where can people see that? Uh, it's my second channel. It's youtube.com slash The Blair White Project. 
And um, I've had crazy guests on there. I've had Alex Jones, Michael Malice, Chris Hansen. Uh, so that's been a fun project of mine recently. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Just, just, just more content. Just more. You know, and you know, Blair, I want to give you a bit of a compliment here because we're, we're uh, I think we're both in kind of the same group of the very few people that kind of survived yeah. the kind of the content, like, Remember, remember the 2016 era. Remember how great and easy it was to get right. Like it was so easy to make content. Everyone was thriving, and then like everyone kind of disappeared. But like you've a lot of them was crazy. A lot of them started doing drugs. A lot of them uh, switched up because the tide was turning ever so (laughs) slightly to the left, and so they said, "Actually, I'm a leftist." Yeah, Uh, look at that. Yeah, and 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 I I see that with you too. And you know, there's a few people that survived. Maybe like three or four others that I also have that respect for. So, you know, it's, it's, there's something to be said about that. Cause a lot of people that started with us are nowhere to be found. Almost all of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, to, to the cockroaches of, uh, of YouTube commentary, thank you so much for coming on Blair. Um, uh, everyone make sure you go check out her channel. Uh, I'm going to continue on here and, um, I really, I really appreciate you Blair. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, Thanks for having me. Bye Jeremy. Bye. Okay. That was Blair White, and we have another guest. I have another guest for you. I have another guest for you. Let me read the rest of the super chats that I missed. Um, and then I have another guest. Look at me go. Okay. Um, let me get the invite to another guest. Yeah, let me just say this. Like, um, uh, if Kayla like muted anybody or whatever, like, uh, I didn't want to interrupt her talking, but like, I don't really stand for like people being f- assholes to my guests. So like, I saw some shit going on in chat that's not okay. Like, you can disagree or whatever, you know, um, and that's that's totally fine. But like, I'm not playing with like you know, being just genuinely mean, if you understand what I mean, it's only a small percent, but like I told the mods that like, I'm not playing with that. So it's hard enough to get guests. And, um, I I just don't want people to, to be, you can say that you disagree with them or you can call them an idiot or whatever. I don't care about that, but it's the shit that's like that next level up that I don't play with, you know? Um, and you can call me a simp all you want, but that same rule applies for men and women. Um, and my next guest is a man. And so it's the same rules apply. Um, okay. So Ms. Kim says, Blair, you have a pretty smile. Oh, sorry. Big fan. Malice is not bad. American capitalist says they weren't talking about Dave and his wife. It was Mrs. Caucus pronounced Mises. Oh shit. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, if you're still in chat, you're fine. It was just, you know, people got, you know, yeeted. What's up, uh, Dread? What's up, Jeremy? Appreciate you, dude. I miss you, man. You got to come to my new house uh, for, new- we're going to have an epic New Year's party this year. Um. So, okay. Stephanie Beast for 50. Jesus. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jeremy and Sydney every Thursday. Now Blair White. Didn't realize it was December already. Thank you for the Christmas present for both being so pretty, Jeremy and Blair. Oh, that was so kind. Um, Alex Mueller says, I'm, w- I'm wondering whether this whole issue will hit Europe in the same way it hit the U.S. After all, your country is still huge cultural influence. I actually think it's going the other way, right? Like, um, I think that y- it hit Europe already, don't you? Uh, hold on a sec. Let me get my next guest. Okay. Uh, Grofty for two says, buck, buck like crazy chickens. We need to. Sassy Ghost, I got that one. Red Muskrat, <clears throat> I got that. Magnificent Devil, got that. Um, Mark Meechan, as a trans woman myself, oh, I got that one. I just wanted to make sure I got the questions for her like right away, you know, um, gender euphoria, Dave Smith. Okay. I think I got that. By the way, thank everyone for being so generous tonight. 
Um, DJ Zeno says, just missed the stream, but just wanted to say I love you guys. Hey, thank you. Um, no, no, I, I, I don't know how often I'll do these like guest spots, but if like if enough people want to come on, um, and like, you know, we can keep, uh, keep them positive, and we can like make it worthwhile for the guests. Um, you know, that's the thing. Okay, cool. So, uh, our next guest is uh nuance bro jeremy revealed his virgin card i've been with the best of them on one in 20 women women letting you watch her apply tampon wait what jeremy revealed his virgin card i've been with the best of them and one in 20 women maybe letting you watch her apply tampon how the how the fuck do you know how that works Wait, knowing how a tampon works makes me a virgin? Bro. What? Um, okay, so yeah, people said they really liked the kind of the multi guest rapid fire thing. People really liked yesterday's show. Uh oh, why is Ethan Klein trending? <clears throat> oh, here we go. <clears throat> here we go. Okay. Um, Nuance Bro is here. Uh, can you hear me? I think you can hear me. Yeah, I can't hear you, but I think you can hear me. Okay. Um, I'm just going to take a leak quick. And then we're going to move on to Nuance Bro. By the way, Nuance Bro's, all of his information is also in the description and his Twitter and his YouTube. Um, subscribe to both. And uh, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be right back. Like, I just got to take, I just got to go. I, I got to go. I just got to go refill my drink and take a leak. All right. Thanks for coming, dude. Hold on.
All right, here we go. Welcome to the stream, Mr. Nuance Bro himself. Yo, yo, what's going on? Hey, how are you? Hey, uh, maybe turn down your audio a little bit. You're peeking. Oh, um, how's that? Worse. Is it, is it using your mic? Yeah, my microphone. Oh, that's much better. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's much better. All right. Yeah, that was... Uh, that was interesting. So, hey, thank you so much for coming on. I know you have a big debate to watch tonight. Yes, you the got, uh, Fetterman Oz debate, the Kathy Hochul Zeldin debate's happening right now. Oh, I'm so I'm sorry. I'm I'm taking you from it, but I appreciate you. By the way, it's a nuance bro. His information is in the description, his Twitter and his YouTube. Please follow both. Um I wanted to get your take on uh, first of all, thanks for coming on. But second of all, uh, kind of this, I mean, is it really the giant douche or the turd sandwich between Oz and Fetterman? That's how it feels. Uh, to me, Oz seems like a much better option, but man, just like all the choices for Senate, even in the Republican primary were pretty bad. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Pennsylvania, I think really screwed it up with their choices. Yeah, I think um, with Dr. Oz, man, I'll just never forgive him for that. My wife was going to make a fancy chutney or whatever it was. And like, look at the price of these vegetables. I'm just like you. My <laughs> wife is making this totally bourgeoisie, like, like uh, I don't, what was it? It wasn't, I don't know, was it chutney? I don't remember, but it was something that regular people don't eat. Yeah. And uh, and uh, that was just bad. Fetterman, I mean, the guy, I mean, no, you know, like. A million times no. Looks um, like Frankenstein clearly has a problem from his stroke. Uh, you know, just is I clearly think, not fit to serve. Yeah, I think it's really weird. I mean, it's it also. I mean, I feel like even our president was uh, pushed through, felt <laughs> like not fit to serve. But the um, he just, I mean, good lord, you know, like and and like it's one of those things. Like uh, I'm a PA resident. Yes, both are crap. Yeah, I, it feels like. You feel bad for him because we're we're human. You're like, bro, had a stroke. You know, like he's actually pretty good considering he had a stroke. He doesn't seem to have any like long term physical effects. He has his, you know, as a as like a human, I'm happy for him. Uh, as a politician, yikes. You know, like I'm not sure that he's fit to serve. But he wears Carhartt hoodies, so he's just like you. <laughs> well, I think the the hoodie thing to some degree, especially now, is used to cover up like he's got this big bulge on oh, his neck. What is that? Uh, I I don't know if it's fat, a tumor, what's going on there, but it looks like I a mean, goiter. That's the, what the, I, that's Yeah, it, it, but usually those are kind of like on the front of the neck, aren't they? Typically? I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Yeah, I just know but, yeah, it looks gross whatever it is. Yeah, but I mean it, it, if you saw the interview he did with the woman, I believe from uh, NBC, he had to read off of a monitor and merely for her pointing that out and talking about how he had problems like responding to her questions, understanding yeah. what he was saying. She got like reamed by the left wing press and he's going to have to do that tonight as well. I believe he's going to be reading off of a off a screen. Yeah. And which is like, I mean, that should just be automatic disqualifier. But you have people who are like, Red till I'm dead, vote blue no matter who. What what percentage do you think nowadays is even really up for grabs? As people have been so hyper hyper politicized now or polarized, it feels like fewer people are up for grabs now than ever. Um, that might be true, but I think it's more than a lot of people think. So uh, I know personally a lot of people who, you know, for many years were extremely like blue no matter who. Uh, yeah. all the way down ballot. But nowadays, especially if they've moved states, they're like, well, I'll vote red for local and state candidates because I live here. But on and the federal level, yeah. you know, they 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 vote blue or something like that. So you'll probably see tickets splitting like that when it comes to uh, like the Georgia race or the Pennsylvania race where people might 
actually in the Pennsylvania race, it might be the opposite where people vote blue because they think Mastriano is like a QAnon guy and super crazy, <laughs> but they vote yeah. Oz. Uh, you know, I've seen examples of that where they take it split like that, where it's Shapiro for governor, but Oz for Senate. Did you see the latest uh, Veritas video today? I don't, I, it was like, it was like billed as a bombshell. I wasn't surprised, but they were like, Oh yeah, the the left wing's been financing like the craziest right wing candidates that they can because they knew they're easier to beat. And I'm like, well, duh, why is that a bombshell? But I guess getting it out there and actually hearing it for for normies, um, it was pretty powerful. Yeah, I mean, that's been a story. That's not a new story. I mean, the Washington Post reported on this. You can go look this up on Open Secrets. The Democrats have been pouring money into what they consider like far right winger election deniers saying like, oh, if we get these people nominated and they go into the general with our Democratic candidates, they're going to lose. But the problem is they're seeing in some of these states like they're actually coming really close or actually beating their own candidates in many cases. Like the reason they I mean, you saw in the video where she talked about Carrie Lake. They're like, oh, we wanted Carrie Lake to win over uh, I really yeah. Robeson. Uh, because yeah. Carrie Lake is like crazy, but Omega Carrie Lake's Carrie probably Lake. going to win according to basically everything. Yeah, she looks like she's going to win. And then you have, um, uh, you know, uh, in Georgia, you have Stacey Abrams versus Brian Kemp as yeah, the for Brian governor, Kemp. and then for Walker and Warnock for Senate. Yeah, and Abrams just had like that horribly embarrassing uh, showing where she had like nobody show up for. Her. And then, oh, and you also had MSNBC, was it? Did the interview of all these uh, mega cultists. And uh, they thought they were going to totally own them and make them look stupid. Um, because they, there's two things that the Democrats seem to really want to run on. The worst day in American history, worse than Pearl Harbor, worse than 9-11, which is January 6th. And then, um, and then like mega. So they say, oh, he's a mega Republican. Or well, abortion's like, a big one they're also running on. It's like abortion, abortion in January 6th, yeah. Yeah, and um, more similar than maybe people think. But the uh, it's interesting to me. So do, do you, are you aware that, do you see that interview where they're like, oh, yeah. yeah, aren't you guys shocked and appalled by what happened on the day? Like, what do you mean? Nothing really happened. Oh, but what about all the, uh, nobody died. But what about the, actually, he had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> it was so embarrassing. Yeah, I, I saw some of it. that with the the January sixth thing. Where like literally every single one of them were like, "No, nah, like I saw them moving the gates out of the way. They were yeah. letting people in and things yeah. like that." So that was pretty interesting. With Stacey Abrams, though, did you see where she mentioned? I'm trying to remember exactly what she said, but it was something like, "We need to like abort the poor in order to like help alleviate poverty or something like that it was it was pretty bad optics i'd have is to she say she also the isn't she also the fake baby heartbeat lady the fit yes her? that i believe that that was her where she said that's, that's digital fake. heartbeats they're digital yeah. heartbeats that's not a real baby heartbeat that you're that you're scrambling and flushing down the toilet that's a digital heartbeat that big baby heartbeat monitor uh, inserts into uh, in, into uh, sonograms for kids. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, that's a that's a weird issue. I, I I I actually understand why abortion is a big issue at the state level, and it should be. Um, now, I mean, I, how could it not be now? Um, yeah. but it's uh, you know, and by the way, everyone, would you, would you mind? You know, I kind of jumped right into it. I came in like, thank you for like, you know dealing with me but nuance bro you've been creating content for a long time and do you is that and you've also been doing a lot of kind of man on the street stuff you're one of the early guys that i saw ever do that um you know being out there interviewing people and and getting audio like that what you know what are you up to now um in terms of content creation or um you know in your daily life that's a good question. Uh, I haven't <laughs> made videos as recently. Uh, That's as I why probably I asked should have. <laughs> I Yeah, like, I need to. I need to get back on. I need to get on your grind, dude. You're just like uh, pumping. No. You're like a machine pumping it out. But uh, see how you have that sweet hairline. Yeah. Just, <laughs> no, I mean like you know, <laughs> it's not good. You know, when you're on my grind, it goes the other direction. So just know you're trading. Yeah, I need. To, I definitely need to work a little harder. I have a few videos in the pipeline that I'm uh, getting ready to put out, but um. Yeah, just uh, a lot more of the same. There aren't as many like in-person type uh, 
I guess, events that are interesting to me that much anymore, especially once you've done a bunch of them, you've kind of done them all. If there's like, you know, super interesting ones that are kind of unique, like I'll do them. Like, for example, January 6th, that was one that I did. Uh, yeah. I went to. Uh, that was an uh, interesting day. The first guy I interviewed that day, by the way, uh, was I actually the, the QAnon shaman I guy. That was the that first your, guy. Yeah. So, I mean, what are the chances, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, boy, it's, uh, you know, I don't know how much you can or can't say about this stuff these days, but I will say this. We're locking a lot of people up for a really long time for, in my opinion, political reasons. Um, you know, it's uh, people that were there that uh, were just filming, for example, you know. Oh, yeah. You'd um, be surprised how many people who were there, like even with uh, like press passes, whatever, whether they were inside, outside, had FBI people come to their door and stuff like that. My was, video editor had the FBI come and they're like, they're trying I, to, I know who you're talking about. He was the one yeah. filming for me that day, by the way. Yeah. 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 He's been. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So it's really like scary. You know what I mean? Like, I know he's not like a lunatic. You know what I mean? Like, I know he's not, but like now he's caught up in stuff and uh, it's scary. What do you think, you know, as, as you're like one of the early people I watched kind of man, manning on the street in terms of this, like political, like you did the CPAC stuff and, you know, it, it seems like we're kind of getting to a point now where you have seen these college tours kick back up. It's really reminding me a lot of 2016. Mm. Like you have Matt Walsh out there kicking beehives going to universities doing these tours it's like 2016 all over again where it was like remember it was like crowder shapiro milo they were do doing these college tours and then they were getting all sorts of incredible crazy people footage over the past couple of weeks you've seen a guy like alex stein yesterday like at penn state or whatever <laughs> like i mean like do you think that there's like i worry about people's safety you know, more, more than anything, because people are so crazy nowadays. You know, do you think that there's a future in this still, like getting out there and being a man on the street in inside these like, you know, hornet's nests? Well, that's partially one of the reasons why I kind of tapered back on doing some of those things. Not because I was necessarily oh, you don't want to worried die? about. Well, not mean? even necessarily about my safety. I mean. You know, I'm not going to get too much into security protocols, but, you know, you're we're fine. We're, we're, yeah. pro we're pretty much like armed, <laughs> yeah. like all the time. But, yeah, uh, you fine. know, it's for like my, my camera people, I, I can't like really justify putting them in harm's way. Uh, it just it doesn't make sense to do that all the time. So if I can go by myself, maybe I'll do that. But yeah. then I can't really be in front of the camera. I'd have to just be getting footage behind the camera. Yeah. And you see a lot of that even with like. I mean, when's the last time you saw Andy No do a you know a deep dive anymore? And those yeah. guys, I mean, how many times did he have to get his ass kicked? You know, and like, you know, no disrespect, Andy. He, you know, he's a friend of mine, but you know, he's not you. Like, he's not out there defending himself. He's out there just trying to survive, um, which is admirable too, of course. But it's it's crazy when you see. I, I just feel like this undercurrent of like it's going to be a 2016 crazy um explosive election season again even in the midterms where it feels like more people are involved now than ever you have i don't know, it was cardi b or something bringing stacy abrams out or whatever and you've all these like oh i know what i want to ask you sorry uh red wave yes or no mm. uh definitely for the house the republicans are going to take the house i think it like 99 plus percent chance of that for senate yeah. uh it's also most likely republicans will take the senate but it's not a guarantee uh if you've been looking at the betting markets at all or rcp so i have been watching that yeah yeah so rcp they have this you know basically they look at what the numbers are now uh based on the polling and then what the result like what the polling was back in like 2020 2018 2016 and what the results ended up being and it checks like okay what did the polls typically underestimate by so okay. in arizona right now we're looking like lake the polls show she has rcp average of plus 1.4 uh, but the gop was underestimated in previous polls by about 2.3 so they're projecting lake plus 3.7 um, and this it. is okay. true for a lot of other places that a lot of people are kind of counting out like michigan rcp actually projects uh tudor dixon to unseat 
Whitmer by plus 1.9. That's so a, this is that happening. Would be a, that'd be historic. Like, uh, Michigan, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like that. You're talking about auto. You're talking about Union Central going red. Yeah. Uh, also- even Wisconsin. Wisconsin, they're projecting uh, the Republican winning by 4.1. As well, yeah. uh, both Wisconsin. Senate and uh, and uh, governor. Yeah, well, as a Wisconsinite, you know, we remember, you know, we have a, a, a cuckold governor, Tony Evers, who's probably one of the biggest limp uh coward liars I've ever encountered in my life. Uh, he's going to get crushed uh, by the Republican. I think Tim Michaels, his name is. Um, a lot of it is backlash, at least here locally, to the lockdowns. Um, People didn't like it unless the only people that liked it were people in the city and people in the city vote blue anyway. So what it did is it turned a lot of people, purple people to red. Um, The same people that went blue, I think, I think there's a lot of people, at least in my state, just because I'm like a man of the people. You know, I try to talk to, I'm not like a terminally online guy, talk to regular people. And like, there's a lot of people that I think got sucked into the, we're going to have World War Three if you vote for you know Trump again. So they've reluctantly voted for Biden, and now they're like, "Oh my God, it's worse than ever." And like, you know, next year economically, I think it's going to be extraordinarily difficult. And um, so I think that they're going to go back to red, uh, at least here locally, because our governor sucked. He 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 instituted lockdowns, but the sheriff's department. I I assume every state works like this. I'm not well-educated on, but our sheriff's department said we're not enforcing that. So like all the counties outside of the city were open and they, they, the sheriff's basically put out a, like a PR statement. They're like, we're not enforcing this. We're not arresting people for going to the bar. We're not telling you to, you know, not shut down your business, but we are telling you we're not arresting you for it. So all in the small, in the suburbs, everything reopened immediately. Like the next day, the city stayed locked down for weeks. And even like really didn't really get back until like this last summer, you know, they still had all sorts of weird restrictions in place. So people I think were, I don't know, disillusioned by that, thankfully. And so they'll change how they vote this time. Yeah. And crime is a huge one too. I mean, that's one of the top issues people are talking about right behind inflation. Uh, in New York, it's actually so bad that it's, it's potentially going to result in the Republican winning, which would be, like probably Historic. one of the craziest, uh, like the, one of the biggest upsets in American history, like post World War II. So, uh, could yes. you imagine living there? I don't know. Um, I, if, if where you live is not public, don't answer this. But like, I mean, I live in the Midwest and I live in the suburbs. Crime is like drunk driving and like domestics. I don't live in the big city, but could you imagine living in New York? Like, just think about it, man. Think about well, trying to take that subway. Like, well, I was no. born and raised in uh, San Francisco, so I saw uh, plenty of this okay, stuff. And yeah. I'm in, I'm in uh, Houston now, which is also pretty bad. Houston's uh, rough. I, I'm, yeah, in, yeah. I'm in a safe, a much safer part of Houston, but like you know, you you, you see things, and yeah. uh, we're People trying to get rid Houston's of our huge. own. Oh yeah, it, it's it's one of the biggest cities uh, in America as far as population. But we have this county judge, which. You know, when I first moved here, I'm like, county judge. Oh, that's a judge with like a gavel and they they do court cases. No, that's basically like the mayor of the county. And this chick's like oh. 31 years old. She's a, as Alex Stein might say, like a big booty Latina, sexy Latina. Nice. Okay, and uh, yeah. But she's totally unfit for the job. She's like one of these defund the police people, kind of. But she pretends like she's not because she wants to get elected. But she actually might be unseated by the Republican. Uh, the polls are showing. And the liberal paper in the area endorsed the Republican, which is uh, pretty crazy. <laughs> Well, yeah. it's because when it comes to you, right? Like uh, when poor people attack poor people, like the establishment doesn't care. So like when you look at like, um, or like, or just look at the freaking mayor of Seattle, right? Um, what's his name? Uh, he had like the Chaz thing going forever. And then he no. quietly moved out of like downtown Seattle because it was too dangerous. And it's you sure like, that wasn't the the port the Portland? Or was it Portland? It might have been. It Portland. might have been the Portland. Wheeler? I mean, they, they had shade. We, what Wheeler, I believe, is uh, Portland. Okay, in, so Portland. In Seattle then, yeah. had Chaz, but I think Portland had their own version. Yeah, version of that Chop. Too. 
Well, the... I think Chaz turned into Chop, <laughs> right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of Wheeler, I think, but like Wheeler yeah. was like, oh yeah, fight the power, and then he's like, I'm gonna move out of this. I'm moving out of the city, and uh, I, you know, like I don't know if it's who I follow on Twitter or whatever, but dude, every day, like if you read the New York Post, if you want to get black pilled, read the New York Post every day. <laughs> every day, there's another video of somebody pushing somebody in front of the freaking train. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm also a firm believer that the lockdowns made bad people worse. Like, I, I don't know how to really describe it, but I think like the coof and like everything around it really ruined, wrecked a lot of people. Um, it made them evil. Uh, I'm not a religious guy, but I just mean it made, it seemed like it made people worse. It had an effect. Like even now I say it screws with how people drive. People seem like they're worse drivers now after the lockdowns. I opened the New York Post like, well, here's another person getting pushed in front of a train on camera. Like, how do you vote for whatever? And then they have a rat problem. That they, like, it's <laughs> well, 2022. Been for, it's been forever, yeah. Yeah, but it's 2022, and like the big ticket item on their mayor mayoral ballot is, can you handle rats? I'm like. <laughs> Well, maybe if you they know, unleashed uh, cats like they do in some uh, third world countries. That you know? actually would be based, though, because cats are awesome. Yeah. And then you have like uh, in San Francisco, too. I mean, at some point, you can only virtue signal like Seth Rogen about, well, my car got broken into a dozen times. And oh, I got the sweet knife one time that I, like everyone has to have a breaking point, don't you think? Yeah, and we're seeing that. I mean, it's easy to doom post, but we're seeing reversals, even in places as crazy, like the furthest left in the country, San Francisco, they recalled the district attorney, Chesa Boudin, not that yeah. long ago. I mean, this is the most Democrat city, basically, in America, got rid of their, you know, essentially commie uh, DA. Yeah. And, about as left as they get. And yeah. even Oregon, which, you know, we were talking about with respect to Portland, which pretty much always votes Democrat, they actually have a chance of electing a Republican governor uh, because it's kind of like a three-way. Like there's a, the, well, you know, Menage is <laughs> there's a, there's the Democrat, but there's also this independent who a lot of Democrats, I guess, are voting for. So it's like also can, the cannibalizing Democrat. the votes, which actually might give a chance for the Republicans. So we might be able to see a Republican winning in Oregon as well. Could you imagine like Republican wins in Oregon, quadruple the police force. Like, that's one of the biggest misconceptions about crime that the left pushes, in my opinion. Like, I'm not an all cops are good guy. I just want to be clear. There are bad cops that should be, you know, dealt with just like any bad person should be. But the answer is to, to crime is not less cops. It's more. Like, you put these, you put dudes on every corner, you start locking people up, and you make them sit. That's the thing with New York. They just had this poor woman. I've seen her face, like, just pummeled to, like, ground beef. From a guy that was paroled, like, or for, uh, like, ca caught and released, like, two hours before that. Yeah. And it's like, how can you see that and be like, this is this this is working? Like, I, but I more cops in that instance doesn't solve the issue. That's because the state passed these bail reform laws where they yeah. have automatic release for like almost every crime short of murder. It's insane. That same day cashless bail. It's it's insane. They have to stop that policy. Yeah, and it's like eventually these people end up in jail, but how many more victims will be along the way? You know, how many more people will they will they interact with? You just look like, um, you know, even ugh, remember the bodega guy? He left the country because all he tried to do was like defend himself and New York put him in jail. And it was like, wait a minute here. Uh, remember that story? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, Jose Alba, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and it's always a, a woman getting a guy in trouble too. I'm gonna go get my man. Man comes down, you know, he catches, he, he catches, uh, you know, he Fs around and finds out. They put that guy in jail. Um, he, you know, the Las Vegas guy, you know, I don't know what happened with him. Did he ever get charged? Las Which Vegas Las, vape store. Oh, the guy, uh, I don't, that was borderline. Think so I don't know. I don't I'm think, not sure. Yeah. But it's like, why are people having to do this? Well, it's because you keep catching and releasing and you keep just putting, you know, the criminals back on the streets and there's no deterrent. I do agree that like you can't like when people aren't afraid of jail then they don't stop committing crime. But I, I don't really know how you fix that. You know, that that's a bigger, I guess, a bigger question.
Yeah, I mean, it's got to be on all levels. It's got to be, you know, if you don't have enough police, get the police up to adequate numbers. It's got to be the district attorneys. It's got to be the judges. The judges in some cases are absolutely atrocious. We have that problem here in Houston where the judges are terrible. Um, and you have to take into account criminal history. I mean, when you see these cases where it's like over 100 arrests for a yeah. single person in like five years, that should yeah. never be uh, something that happens. At some uh, point, you say like they're not ready to be in civilized society. Like yeah. th at some point, that's just not the case. I, I don't really know how you do that. But like you're on your 70th federal, <laughs> like your 70th crime. I don't really know if I'm if I'm really buying letting you out, you know, well, that's why you had three strikes back in the day. But a lot increasingly they got rid of that. Rid of that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the third strike was 20 years, I think. Right. Um or you like in no matter how big or small that third strike was, you. If I remember, I think, right, I think if it constituted a felony, they they would be. You know, oh, it had to be a felony. Okay, I believe okay. so. Yeah. So what 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 do you like to see out of um, the debates tonight? Like, uh, I mean, <laughs> what, well, like well, Doctor seen... Oz appearing human or. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen part of the Hokel Zeldin debate. Uh, it would have been nicer to see him uh, hit her on some of the crime issues. He wasn't doing the best on that. But on from Oz and Fetterman, I just, I mean, I just want to see the spectacle that would be <laughs> Oz and Fetterman. Like how, yeah. like how many times is Oz, like uh, Fetterman going to like stutter and fumble his words or not understand what's going on? Yeah, I don't know. Oz has a little bit of that Mitt Romney stank on him for me. Where like he's a little too Republican, polished. Um, well, yeah, polished. he's a little just, too polished. Hey, just That's the word. doesn't yeah. seem authentic. Doesn't seem like a real person. Yeah, and like he also, you know, I won't. I'm not like a. I mean, I voted for Trump, but I'm not like a. Trump was a god guy, and um, you know, he basically took that Trump endorsement, and then he immediately scrubbed him, and I was like. He, it was like the next day he took him off his Twitter feed or whatever. Once he had like achieved the nomination or whatever, I forget exactly what it was, but I remember he like weaseled a little bit. Like I'll take the Trump bump, but then I'll disassociate from him. Um, you know, Trump still has power. He's still a kingmaker, at least in, with Republican power, with Re Republican people. Like he, most of his people win, not all, but you know, most of the people that he endorses win. So, well, because he also waits kind of last minute in some cases to endorse <laughs> yeah, who he thinks spots. is going to win. Because they yeah. also want to they want to have this stat and be like, oh, look, see, most of the people I endorse win. Therefore, you should want my endorsement when it's really like uh, like Blake okay. Masters. He endorsed the guy last minute when he was already up in the polls anyway. So, uh, OK, fine. Yeah. 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 No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> this is pretty right. typical, by the way. They, they like they all do this. Well, yeah, I suppose they're not going to risk taking an L. What do you think? Um, I wanted to get your thoughts on, um, you know, how you think twenty twenty four plays out. Do you have a Do you have a prediction there? Not yeah, maybe I mean, not who wins, but maybe yeah. who runs. Um, it's really far out as far as winning. Um, you know, I said it would actually probably benefit Republicans more to slightly lose during the midterms, so that you know, there's no way you can blame anything on Republicans if Democrats mm -hmm. control House, Senate, and presidency like they kind of already do right now. Um, but you know, if Republicans take control of the house and the Senate, then, yeah. you know, usually the media is like, oh, the Republicans they can are, deflect. they're, yeah. they're stopping yeah. Biden from getting his agenda done. They own this or whatever. So yeah. it could hurt Republicans. Gas prices would be $2 a gallon if it weren't for those pesky Republicans. Exactly. So, um, as far as who's going to run, I think, I mean, Trump's been talking about, he's been mentioning it a lot in his speeches. It seems like he would run, uh, DeSantis, everyone says he would have to run um he doesn't know, have to i don't think uh i mean this is kind of like you know chris christie you know people bring up chris christie like this was he had his big time you know in the sun uh for a while yeah. but then because he waited too long like it, it it was over he waited too long and it was over so that could be the same thing for desantis potentially um i i think he would probably have to run this He's cycle at peak popularity probably right now exactly and that's when you would yeah, want to run fair. yeah yeah and he doesn't have any, he's like, he's like Trump without the scandals yet. Now, maybe there's all sorts of stuff the media can dig up, you know? Um, Probably might, not too much because he's already, you know, he's been vetted for governor and everything like that. Yeah. So. And I'm sure like he's also under the kind of the national uh, microscope. It, it, in my opinion, 
he would still need Trump's endorsement um, because it's still going to be well fought. And like, if Trump would endorse him, he would win, in my opinion. Um, if Trump ran, I think it would be a, a coin toss. What do you think about what do you think about Trump v. Biden round two? It's it's hard to say in the rare polling, non-consecutive rare I non-consecutive mean, uh, terms. Yeah, I think it would be what he'd be like second, the or third, only the only other one. There was like one guy before. Yeah, um, he'd be the second, I think, ever. Yeah, so. The polls show that he's like slightly up, which is like kind of disappointing given how bad Biden's approval numbers are. He's had some gaffes though, too. Like Trump's kind of like, he's had some gaffes. I think it could be, like you said, I think it it should be bigger. Yeah. I mean, nobody motivates the voters to come out more uh, for and against than Trump. Like he's just got that power. Whereas DeSantis, I think he could get a lot of people who are. You know, they, they want to change in the country, but he doesn't have that like, tie. oh, orange man, bad, mean tweets, uh, you know, racist, anti like, I mean, they're going to say all that stuff about DeSantis, too, DeSantis, but it doesn't yeah, have right. that history. It doesn't have the theatrics of, you know, Trump's personality and things like that as well. So, oh, yeah, 80 million votes, you know, but the uh, the uh, 81, 81, a, million. 81 yeah. million, 81 million, my apologies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the I here's what I think. I just want like you're you're much more intelligent about this. So I, I wanted to bounce this off you and you tell me if I'm off my rocker. So my fear about Trump running again is that, right? Like he'll remobilize, you know, the base because they know how to beat him. However, Trump could basically <laughs> go out there, unzip his pants and be like, remember four years ago? Hasn't been that long, has it? Remember when you were paying 250 a gallon for gas? Remember when, you know, like, uh, and also side note, he'll be back on Twitter in less than a month. So like, I don't care what he says about not rejoining Twitter. He's a liar. He will use Twitter. So the, uh, there's no way he doesn't return to his 80 million Twitter followers or whatever it was, some insane number. Um, so, you know, I think he could probably win in like a knockdown drag out against Biden because I think the orange man, bad nuclear war, this and that. It's not as it's, you know, it's like, I don't know. I I think it's played out. I think DeSantis wins in a landslide with the, with the appropriate, like DeSantis, what about DeSantis, Christy Noem, most attractive ticket in Republican history. (laughs) Like you could do, you could do that because it's going to be a woman. That's just the default. Now you can't have two men. So it'd have to be like DeSantis, Noem. Or um, black guy. I don't know if you want or to a play black guy. It could be a yeah, black you could, guy. You know, could be black. It's not I hope a white. Do guy. like a Tim Scott. That would be terrible. Please That'd don't do that. <laughs> yeah, be horrible. Well, the thing is with Trump, he had to have, he had to have um Pence because he needed the religious. Because Trump's not a religious guy, really. So he need he needed like that, like. Uh, so I don't know if it's just DeSantis doesn't need that. I don't think. Well, so some like people he, are saying Carrie Lake because a lot of people kind of love how she talks. She's and spicy. She, I like her. She she comes off like even though she is like what people would consider extreme, she's just so good at delivery because she's been on TV for so long and she looks she's like a quick. familiar face that people would like even if they disagree with her. It's like, I don't know. I just like her, you know? Yeah. 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 I like how she owns. She like owns the media just like Trump did. Um, do you, they had, she had like a back and forth the other day that was just... The whole like I, the Republicans are rolling out this oh election denier huh how about Hillary Clinton how about this how about this how about this mm-hmm. Carrie Lake could do she's got to win first though like they won't run her as VP candidate if she doesn't win yeah in Arizona but I think I still do, my opinion is um and then I'll I'll uh, you know I don't want to hold you up from the debates I do really appreciate you coming this is the first time we met. By the way. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for you? having me on, by the way. Yeah. Oh, thanks for being here. My um my hope is that it would be DeSantis, but I would vote for Trump because man, times are shitty. You know, like times are not awesome right now. And um, I feel like all this stuff that's going on with like Taiwan, Ukraine. I don't know if that happens under Trump. That's just my opinion. You know, I don't think we're sending a, a freaking two hundred billion dollars to Ukraine if if President Trump is in office. 
I don't think no, China's I think, screwing uh, around with Taiwan either. I don't think that's think, happening either. I think that's a fair assessment. I mean, again, they, but Putin waited until Biden was in office to what a shock take these steps. So, um, and it seemed like the world was a bit more peaceful uh, when when Trump was president. But yeah, I think a lot of people are similarly torn, like you are, when it comes to like uh, Trump or DeSantis. They they see the positive and negatives of both. So. I mean, when I go around asking people at CPAC and things like that, they're really open to both. Uh, more so, they lean towards Trump, but that's CPAC, so it's also just like yeah. a, a bit of a biased sample. But I guess well, it would we'll, be a disaster. We'll it would be a disaster if Trump ran like as a third party or something, or like that's a lot of people's fear. I don't know that he would necessarily do that. Um, I it, think he. W I'm not. I'm not necessarily sure he wouldn't. Like, I would legitimately. <laughs> Come on, like I love it. It reminds you. It reminds you of that moment in the debate where they're like, "Will you eventually support yeah. the you know Republican nominee?" Everyone raises their hand except Trump, and he's just yeah. like, "Nah," <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's what I'm worried so. about. If he suddenly was like, "I'll run as a third party," it would just be an L for sure. Because Trump's base, that's no. There's like t ten to fifteen million, maybe twenty million, like. I live where I live. I still see Trump 2024 signs everywhere. The guy hasn't declared he wants to run. People have Trump 2024 signs. So like if he doesn't endorse the next candidate or if, if he, I think he's not, oh man, is he more of a narcissist or does he want what's best for this country? Because if he ran as a third party, Democrats win easily. It's not even close because he'll leech off 20 million, 30 million votes in the, in the third party vote. And that would be a disaster because then, I mean, whoever Republicans run, it's four more years of where's my, where am I going? What? What? <laughs> well, I, a lot of people are saying it's not even going to be Biden. They think it's going to be like Newsom. Uh, I, don't, I can't see them running Kamala Harris. That's just a guaranteed victory for the Republicans. Two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago, people yeah. thought it would be oh, come after Joe Biden won. Everyone's like, oh, it's going to be Kamala. Now she's so universally hated on both sides, yeah. and she has so spectacularly failed on literally every uh, task. She, granted, Biden has given her some real stinkers, like "Hey, go down to the border and f and fix that." Oh, hey, hey, go to North, go to South Korea, and not know the difference between North Korea and South Korea. Like she's she's had so many gaffes that she's unrunnable. Like she she's done in politics. I think like this unless she. Unless Biden wins again and she stays as VP, like she really blew it. But they got the black vote by by having a black female vice president, which is all he really wanted. He didn't care. <laughs> well, they get the black vote regardless. I, I don't think yeah. uh, black people yeah. even are particularly fond of Kamala Harris. But um, you know, I, I think Trump could potentially consider, hey, if there's a Republican in office who's very pro me and I endorse him, and part of this endorsement deal is that. I don't know, maybe him and the people he knows get pardoned because Democrats are trying to, like, you know, convict him uh, for mm. various well, they things. They got his buddy Bannon on four months, five months, right? Although that'll be done by then, but. Yeah, but I, as far as, like, Trump and stuff, like, maybe he wants, like, a guaranteed pardon. I don't know. Like, they could probably work something out, I would imagine, so that he wouldn't run third party or anything if like that. If you could, because I think he would, he would lose a lot of support if he did run third party and like spoiled the race and guaranteed if he did that, I wouldn't. Yeah, if he did that, I wouldn't vote for him. I'd be like, damn it, dude. Yeah. Like, I, I think if he did, um, what would be interesting is if he, if he, if you could keep him the kingmaker, that's how you get him. You appeal to his ego, yeah, and you say, boy, Ron DeSantis just can't do it without you, um. You just really, you know, like think about what, you know, you will be the man that made Ron DeSantis. Then Ron DeSantis can offer him some role, maybe. Um, I, hey, I wouldn't hate having the guy on some sort of foreign business negotiations if there's some sort of role like around that, like trade deals and stuff like that. Um, because at least he cares about this country and getting good deals for, um, you know, our manufacturing, our, our, imports and exports maybe i don't know yeah well i appreciate uh i'll, I'll let you go to your debates uh i'll look for make sure you follow nuance bro on twitter uh and uh i'm sure he'll be
tweeting some hot takes about about what's going on tonight. And um, I will uh, actually got to tell you something. Uh, I'm going to send you a DM here. I think you might know what I'm going to say, but uh, I can't say it on air. So okay, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for thanks for coming on, dude. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on. All right. See ya. Cool. Cool. All right. Yeah, Nuance Pro is much smarter than me in terms of politics, so I'm glad to have him on. Um, it's good for me to get educated. Um, so I know I think a lot of people tuned out with the politics talk, and that's okay. Um, but I uh, appreciate everyone. How, how do you guys like the uh, live stream? Trump to Sanis, um, probably never going to happen. You know? I can't, I probably can't do it weekly. Um... So did you hear, uh, so looks like the Twitter deal is going through I think the Twitter deal is going through, let's add this. Okay. And we're about to get demonetized, but I don't care. This was the intro that got demonetized. I don't know why. I am too, guys. I'm primetime 99. I just want to say you guys are poor representation of the youth of our nation. Try to shut us down, but prime time's a parent. We get in the car and we go, huh? Yep. Uh, I don't know why it got censored. Uh, it was not the music. Uh, I had to cut it and recut it and cut it again about a dozen times 
trying to figure out why it was getting demonetized. I still don't know exactly, but I feel so sad for Steven. He worked six hours on that intro. Six hours. And I only got to keep like 10 seconds of it for the actual YouTube video. <laughs> it's such a bummer. I think it was either the police section, which I, uh, so a lot of people thought the police section was it. They never tell you. They just say it was demonetized. Um, I thought it was the police, so I cut that. I uploaded 15 different versions, 15 different versions. That's why there was such a huge uh, time difference between my first upload and my second. So, like, as much time as Steven voiceover spent on it. By the way, Steven, go to bed. It wasn't the spit because I kept the spit and uh, it got monetized. It was something with the large crowds. It kind of recognized, I think, uh, like a riot or protesters. Like me just playing that, my stream already went yellow. It actually did. <laughs> Come on, YouTube. Whatever. I don't care. Your super chats sustain me. Yeah, protest. Oh, Al, my other video editor is here. Yeah. That girl did spit a load on his shoulder, so that could have been it too. Yeah. J Max, big dick style uh super chat saved saved us anyway. Did you see DC announced James Gunn as a CEO of DC alongside Peter Safran? I did see that. I've got a video on it tomorrow. Oh, Super Chats. Super Chats. Let me read Super Chats. Get your Super Chats in now. So I can read them. Okay, hold on. I don't think I missed many. I think people like kind of didn't love the hyper-political talk, but Nuance Bro has been good to me. And um, I know at least some people liked it. Uh, Broken Gamer says, uh, Ron DeSantis' Tulsi Gabbard will be a landslide. Ooh, spicy. Artemisia says, lol, Tim just said an established titles commercial and said he is now officially above Dank. Ha, <laughs> got him. Uh, Mike DeRussia, Tyler Zed made fun of your hat. What's wrong with my hat? I don't understand. Why would you make fun of my hat? It's nice. That's not very nice. E. Hef says, I'm PA resident. Yes, both are crap. Uh, DJ Zeno for five says, Blair is not a woman. Correct. But she's earned her pronouns in my book, to be honest. She's too base to hate on. Okay, that's fair. Uh, Sassy Ghost, I got that. Okay. I think I'm caught up on Super Chats. Um, let's see. I don't know what, I think the hat's cool. I don't, I don't know. I think, uh, I think what I'm going to do is announce some sort of sales goal for goal for coffee brand coffee this week. I can't really decide. I think a thousand sales. That's what I, I did. A thousand sales to shave my beard. So I might do 2000 sales, shave my hat. What do you think about that? Uh, Happy Mars says, hope this picks up for the demonetization a little. Do you think if Blair, do you know if Blair also thinks Dylan Mulvaney is a troll? Also, I'm thinking yes. Um, you'd have to watch the stream for her like interpretation of it. Uh, I believe her take was that he was definitely trans and then also playing a character. I think I think 2,000 sales head shave would be... Oh, Juan Garcia, congratulations on your indoor engagement with Kayla. Rip, I messed up and lost a lot of copy-paste of your emails. Wait, what? 
So now's now's the time of the show when I'm going to read uh, chat and interact with chat directly because that's my favorite part of live streaming. Shivley Bain Tech says, uh, "Have you offered Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight a sponsorship? He recently created an e-bag video. Oh no, not Boogie! Boogie, no! I don't know if I have money to support people." who don't create content. You know what I mean? I don't think Boogie creates any meaningful content anymore, does he? Hey, Charlie for five, thank you. <sighs> Crypto killed him. Um, well, well, dude, here's the thing. Oh my God, dude, 9,000, oh, Boogie, no. Boogie, no, no, Boogie. He has 4.1 million subscribers. Wait, how do we even know you have hair? I have hair. I have lots of hair, but it is thinning. And so it might be time to shave it. Four point one million subscribers, and this video has nine thousand views. No, Boogie, no. I don't see any e begging video. I would shave it for two thousand. 2,000 new customer sales. Chris Conway says, hey, you mentioned Ethan Klein was trending at the halfway mark. What's going on with that? I did see that, and there's really nothing going on with it other than uh, he's trying to cancel Keemstar. Am I a Boogie fan? No, absolutely not. Boogie's a habitual liar, e-beggar, uh, and um, sociopath. This video he uploaded a month ago and has 10,000 views. A month ago with 4.1 million subscribers. He sold me out. He sold me out to Wizards of the Coast the first chance he could get. I don't see the e-begging video. Oh, here it is. 264,000 views. Setting out back on this beautiful fall day. Is it didn't he upload a video? Didn't he upload a video? Didn't he upload a video that said, I'm rich, I never have to work again? Didn't, I'm not kidding. Didn't he, didn't he upload a video that said, I'm super rich, I never have to work again? scroll up no no didn't he didn't he upload a video that said i'm I've, i'm a billionaire i never need help again is it fall officially i think it is but in my back grabbers they're polarizing the algorithm likes it so i'm trying to upload over francis videos and that's by design they're attention grabbers they're polarizing the algorithm do you know how many billions of views he's had over the over the years? I'm going to tell you right now. Wait, scroll up. Why are you telling me to scroll up? If I let's say I uploaded a video and said, "I'm rich, I never have to work again." Uh that's the minute I would sell my crypto. Because now you can't make this video. Algorithm likes it. So I'm trying to dig my way out of the hole that I currently Should I invite Boogie on? Currently find myself in. I know not everybody's a huge Probably not fan. tonight. Maybe but Thursday. There's other reasons I'm making those videos as well. There's good 
and there's bad reason. And, and, and let me start off with the good. The good news is if you followed me for any amount of time back in 2019, you'll know I had a nervous breakdown and I had to take a huge break from this job. And I still did the bare minimum. I was on Twitter too much, but I only made like one YouTube video a week or every two weeks. I only live streamed like once a month and it's because I need. Okay. So let me stop him right here. He admits that he didn't put out videos. Then he admits that he also did not live stream. And so then he didn't make any money. So what he's really saying is, I didn't work, so I didn't get paid. Needed a break from this for the first time in like a decade. A break? We make f freaking internet videos. Get out of here. And I was hoping that when I came back last March, my audience would be there for me. And so many of you are. I'm so grateful. So many of you are watching the videos, you're watching them to the end, you're dropping a like, you're sharing them with friends, you're commenting, you're out, you subscribe, you're doing all the YouTube stuff and it means the world to me. And I know I'm gonna- But I want more money. This is a guy that spends thousands of dollars every time a new Magic the Gathering set comes out. Position where mentally and physically, I'm ready to make this type of content again spiritually, mentally, physically, every possible way. I'm excited to make it. I'm enjoying writing for the character again. I'm enjoying acting it out. I'm plotting things out with my friends. I'm looking forward to making a huge Halloween video, a huge Thanksgiving video, a huge Christmas video. That's three videos for the next three months. I feel good. I feel good. And I'm excited to do it again. The bad reason is I'm finally in a position where I have to get back to work. He's out of money. Okay, chat. <sighs> 4.1 million subscribers. 4.1 million subscribers. Billions with a B views. What in the hell did he spend his money on? I know for a fact this guy was making millions. What did he spend his money on? His house ain't that impressive. It's a fine house. Okay, it's a fine house. But it looks like a 1,400 square foot house in Arkansas, which is about 200 grand or less. What did he spend his money on? And I'm not making any excuses here. You yes, you are. You know, I spent a tremendous amount of money on dumb, dumb things. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. 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 But the biggest issue is that I had a nice big nest egg. I took some financial advice from a friend and I'm not pointing fingers necessarily. I took the advice, but I put my money in the crypto market in the wrong section and I pretty much lost most of everything. But didn't he make a video that said I'm rich? Didn't he say, didn't he make a video that said, I'm rich? Like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a small channel compared to his. And I, I, I just, I don't even ever, like, I, I have to make videos every fucking day of the week, five videos a day, and then also Saturdays. That sucks. That really sucks. It is what it is, though. I mean, like, I've come to terms with it, but I need to get back to work. I have some savings, but they're going quickly. And if I... On what, bro? You could have... You should have written a check for that house. Don't start live streaming and making content and getting ad revenue and stuff again. I'm going to lose everything. And I definitely do not want to do that. So that's why I'm asking for your help today. And it's as simple as two two groups of people here i want to talk to the first of which is fans who just like the content if you click on videos you like and i gotta pee this is making me so mad
Why does Jeremy pee so much? Diabetes. No. I'm working on losing weight. And uh, so I'm drinking a gallon of water basically twice a day. That's why. <sighs> Weak burp. But I finished it. And you watch them to the end and you drop a like and you leave a comment and you share it with friends and you click the notifications you do the youtube stuff you this is so manipulative isn't it it's so manipulative <laughs> yeah, tanya beard right that is why i pee so much by the way i've taken two peas in a two hour and 20 minute live stream is that crazy is that a lot you're doing plenty if that's all you want to do, if that's all you can do, I love you to death. You're yeah, if you're a piece of shit and you only leave a like on my videos and you don't buy my merch. You mean everything to me, right? There's a second group of people who might find themselves I like uh, more. able to do a little more. And if you're one of those right, people, here we go. I'm asking for your help today, too. Here we do, go. Do you like the t-shirts I have? This one's not in the merch lane shop yet, but there's several. And I'm making new designs all the time. And if you no, he isn't like a t-shirt, buy a t-shirt. I make like a $9 profit off of a $25 purchase. If you don't want to buy something from me directly, how are his teeth yellow? Again? How are his teeth yellow again? That's always an option as well. If you like a product I'm selling, get involved with a sponsor, shop through them, use my code. If you're in They're a position fake where you only teeth, have like a how are they yellow? Bucks, you can super chat that. When you like a video, um, you, you can pledge $5 a month, $10 a month on the channel membership program. So this entire video, I'm get, I'm new to it apparently. It came out 20 days ago. He's completely broke. He's completely broke. Top comment. Sorry you have to work, man. We all do. This man's richer than most of us. Watching him even after the mistakes he's made, he squandered his money and wants an easy out. Do not feed into it. The world is cruel. And if you want to put your faith in something, give your money to trusted places that will actually help individuals who need it. Do not give into pressure to financially support e-celebs. I mean, this is a DSP, right? This man has literally no shame. It's embarrassing. It's a long time, I must say. Nah, fam. Once in a lifetime YouTuber and personality, and yet it's our responsibility to keep you afloat. If you wanted to create content, you would. Yeah, I mean, just get on that grind, bro. Uh, sponsor me as traffic for you? He doesn't have traffic, bro. He doesn't. His average video upload gets like ten to fifteen thousand views. Well, it is fun. It is twenty thousand six six hours ago. Twenty six thousand the day before. Nine thousand a day ago. I don't, I mean, like, yeah, I'd show my coffee. I want people to buy my coffee, but. And if you do that, if we can get up to like 100 members, I want to start making special clips and videos that'll. This is a man that's had a Patreon for 20 years and never has ever created anything custom for it. They member only for the people who want to see that stuff. Well, my way of saying thank you to you guys. If you watch my live streams and you want to donate, throw bits at me, subscribe there. That's obviously also an option. I've never really pressed my Patreon or pressed channel memberships. Imagine having five freaking million subscribers and still begging for Patreon dollars and also making like literally the most milk toast content. But I kind of have to now. That's a scary position to be in. And the biggest issue I think <laughs> water is that YouTube water is starting gallon. to take my old videos out. Oh, actually.
maybe I could make one of these and then have like memes instead of like these things have like meme sayings on it. The problem with these is they're expensive to ship because they're so big. For 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 five years, Boogie's been saying, oh, I can't make Francis videos anymore, and uh, uh, YouTube doesn't like my Francis videos. Here's what anybody who is not a total loser would say. Uh, make your Francis videos, okay? To bring people to the channel, and then make your money off the more milk toast stuff. That's just me. Okay. Um, I've got to take my dogs out. Take the trash out. I think all, I think, by the way, most all YouTubers <laughs> are fated for this. Some like sad existence at the very end where they're trying to keep chasing the dragon. That's what I don't want. Like, I'm really, 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 really hoping that I can just hang on for one more year. Build my coffee company up big enough, and then in 2023, go down to th three really good videos a day. That would be ideal. Get to three really good videos a day. Instead of five or six. And no Saturdays, no Sundays. That's my goal for 2020, actually 2024. So the grind continues in 2023, but by 2024, I'd like to only, only do three videos a day. I think that'd be all right. You know, I'll be 40. Nobody gives a shit what a 40 year old has to say anymore. Clarence, yeah, I hope to take a break when I'm like, uh, less why I'm pushing coffee brand coffee so much. Like, my dream is seeing somebody drinking coffee brand coffee or having a coffee brand coffee mug and then walking up to them and being like, and then having them be like, who the hell are you? Like, that would be ideal. Like, somebody that just enjoys my coffee, tea, or cocoa and has no clue who I am then I'll feel safe, like dialing it back. I want to thank everybody for their exceedingly amazing support. Whether you're here chatting, leaving likes, whether you super chatted, I'm glad. Will we celebrate 1 million videos? <laughs> now, God, no, I hope not. Your retirement work ethic is better than Boogie. I'm broken. Actually, have to work. Yeah, I mean, like, I will still work. Uh, I will still put out three videos a day, every day of the week. You know, that's not happening. First day, Jeremy sees the CBC mug in public. We will never see him again. No, no, remember, I have to go over and be like, nice mug. Like, I've seen people wearing my merch before. Um, but, like, if I see somebody with, like, a coffee brand coffee mug or a bag, a bag or merch or something, and they have no clue who I am, then I'll know. I appreciate... Uh, Oh, uh, hey, Seuss, Davia, thank you for the super sticker snuck in there with the Halloween-themed one. Bag, bag. Big big news co to cover tomorrow. Got a couple of Elon Musk stories. Got the, obviously, new CEO of DC. We've got Ethan Klein having another Melty trying to cancel uh, Keemstar. Um, you know, Ethan Klein, Jesus, dude, like, take some freaking responsibility take like literally any responsibility for what you said he just refuses 
So we'll have that video tomorrow. Uh, Elon will close the deal on Friday. So we'll have that video on Friday, but also video tomorrow. There's an open letter floating around Twitter internally that we're going to read. We make a video when you start pulling back. Help, I'm attacking my channel. No, probably not. Uh, Mark says, I'll first also suffer from anxiety. Dude, always put mental health before your work. Appreciate you. So what day is tomorrow? Tomorrow is the Incredible Salt Mine. And then Thursday is our regular Thursday show with Sydney Watson. Can't wait. That'll be great. Thank you for everyone. Uh, and uh, we will uh, see you tomorrow. Full schedule.